I'm not sure how sharp he's going to be. If he comes in and he, he's just kind of like half-assed it, he's gonna get destroyed. It's not even gonna be close. The poker community this year, like, they all wanna see this. Like everyone's been saying, I'd love to see them play heads up. It's a very long history between me and Daniel Legrandu. It dates back all the way to 2014 or so. One of the first kind of interactions that I had with him was when he said that he could beat 20 by 50 online with two weeks of study. So that kind of set the tone of things, which is the guy is completely delusional. Well, I think originally it started where uh, he was making it a point to kind of use clickbait to attack people. He talks about me, he says, all Doug does is make videos for clickbait views and burp, burp, burp. He's been very tough online, like I'm gonna kill this guy, calling me names, all this sort of stuff. But then when you see him in person, he's much softer. That's very typical for most online trolls. Like knowing full well that when I said four words, more rake is better, I didn't even fit, you, you didn't even add the rest of the sentence. The man defended a site rake increase by telling you it could be good for you because the games could get softer. That's I think it really kind of stems from the idea that I didn't accept him. I don't care if Negrano thinks I'm a good poker player or not. At my peak of playing poker, I didn't play because I really hope Negrano thinks I'm a good player. I played to win millions of dollars, right? The last time we sort of did play live was Super High Roller Bowl, and he came in with the intention of like making a, a big splash by wearing a t-shirt. It's a very uh, adult way to handle the situation, Daniel. I came in with the intention of destroying him. Daniel yeah, Khan is an assertive. It was. Happy about that one? I left $3 million richer. So the highlight of his day was wearing a t-shirt. The highlight of mine was bagging a chip lead in one of the most prestigious events in history. Tens. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I got spanked like a petulant child. I guess, like, yeah, you got me. Congrats. Let's see how it goes for 25,000 hands. For the most part, I feel like it sort of died off. And then we had a little bit of a Twitter thing where he challenged me to play, heads up. And I thought to myself, OK, well, Here's an opportunity to either just ignore, which is what I'd been doing for 99% of it, or say, you know what? I got some free time. I'm locked up at home, you know, because of all the COVID stuff. Why not give this a shot? The negotiation process was difficult and annoying. So I would say it was just about exactly what I was expecting to have with Daniel. I'm playing him in his specialty, which is heads up, no limit. We're gonna be playing the majority of the match online. There's a lot of people talking about like this match and what the odds are. I know I'm a heavy favorite. I should be a heavy favorite. The question is, am I a four to one favorite or am I a 10 to one or am I a two to one? And people are arguing all over the place. One thing that I do have going for me is that I soak in this stuff really quickly. I do have a 20 year resume of playing poker. There's nowhere to hide and heads up. Like this isn't like he can fold his way around and wait for a set or whatever the hell you know, live pros are doing these days. People just want to see the bloodbath. They like to see the heads up for roles competitions. My goal here isn't to build lasting friendships that will last a lifetime. I, I don't, that's not, I don't really care. I'm here to back up the f truck. Well, if that video was any indication, the contentiousness surrounding campaign season will only pale in comparison to what we're going to bear witness to out of the Poker Go studio here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tonight, it's the launch of High Stakes Feud between Daniel Negreanu and Doug Polk. Certainly, no love loss as yet, but we'll see how they interact at the table. Mano, a mano. Ali Najad, alongside High Stakes Online Pro and Hedge Fund Manager of Crystal Oak Capital, Kane Callis. Good to have you with us, Kane. Awesome to be with you, Ali. Really been looking forward to this match. I mean, there's Daniel Negreanu, the longtime live pro, trying to take down the online heads-up wizard, Doug Polk. Wizard indeed. Doug has almost $10 million in career live tournament earnings, countless millions away from that figure compiled in the online streets. But here we are live, Kane, and obviously Negreanu considers this his realm as they're going to play 25 thousand total hands with an option to quit at twelve and a half thousand hands it's 200 400 no limit hold'em the first 200 hands of course we're broadcasting streaming live here in the studio but then they're going to shift to online where the bulk of the action will take place that's what's really so interesting about this Doug Polk basically made his entire career playing online I'm not taking away from the success he's had at the live tables he has won three bracelets but he is known as an online heads up player and Negrano agreed to play him mostly online but we're starting live yeah in big spots and just 200 hands live at that so really not looking to be a consequential shift of platforms 
in the long run, exchanging pleasantries early, wishing one another We're good luck, cards. and I'm away we go. Thousand dollars. Raise to a thousand. Negreanu raising to 1,000, 2.5x on the button to kick things off with King-3 offsuit and a flat from the Ace-4 of Polk. Top pair right away on the um, rainbow so board weird looking for at real cards. Check. Check the round. Negreanu with the check back on the flop. Check. Still not looking to bet top pair, Kane. Interestingly, you'd expect him to be pretty uh, balanced on that flop, checking back some percentage of the time. I would have expected Negranu to fire the turn some percentage. Three-quarter pot size bet on the river here, and Polk's trying to piece it together. Why did he check back two streets? And is he value betting an eight? Is there a little 10-7 or... 5-7 mixed in there. Oh, look at this. And if this raise comes in, Kane, which it does, wow. Daniel has now underrepped his hand so heavily, he's in a bit of a conundrum. Doug Polk taking the ace four, turning it into a bluff. And now Daniel Negreanu trying to figure out what's going on here. I mean, uh, you numbers? pointed out that he did underrep his hand. I can't imagine we're going to see Negreanu mm -hmm. fold a pair of kings here. Feels like a slam dunk. What is Doug representing here? You know, Doug could play a hand like a rivered two pair this way, maybe a six eight offsuit, a hand like that. I mean, he is representing a pretty narrow range. Or if he just flopped the world or turned the world, right, with pocket deuces, for example, sure. he could choose to check every street, having gone for a check raise on the turn and then going for a check raise you on win. the river. Oh, and Daniel sniffs it out, King. makes the call. Oh, yeah. All right, thanks for playing. I just thought that was a blast, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> just quit and stuff. Well, if that's any indication of what's to come, Kane, this should We're be a delightful a little heads-up battle. <laughs> Both players showcasing their medal there in hand one. Raise. Raise to 900. Oh. Now I gotta protect the lead. 24,000 more. Good luck with that. <laughs> protect the lead, Daniel. Good luck. Don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything stupid. Check. Check. Okay, I don't have an ace. Don't have a queen. Uh, I'll just take black ice coffee is good. Yeah, thank you. I will later, like in a couple hours. I'm also going to do coffee. If he's doing coffee, I'm going to do coffee. It's going to be that kind of we action. Well, I mean, we didn't stipulate, but yeah, we're gonna he's have to, doing it. I'm hold on, gonna, hold on. Let, let's tweet about it. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to bring you some charts just in case. Uh, <laughs> nice. That's a, here, I'll just hold it. It's very strange playing live poker. Very strange. It's especially weird playing live heads up poker. Yeah, everything takes me a minute. Like I didn't even, I couldn't even figure out how much you raised me. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, the, the hand I raised with on that river, it was not a good hand to raise with. But I was just like trying to adjust and like <laughs> it was, it was a punt. It was just a straight punt. All right. At least it worked. Yeah. Raise. Nope, don't have it. Just fold. Raise. You don't have it. You just fold. That's it. Raise and Easy. take it for the queen six suited. Something interesting, Elite, Doug's plan coming into this match was to play a game theory optimal strategy. He made all his money online playing a little more exploitative, and he already said the first hand he wasn't supposed to raise with that hand. He was going for an exploit, and it didn't work out. Now, for those who may be less familiar with the terminology. Have you played poker since COVID started? No. 
No, I didn't even leave my house from before that. 1,000. Do you care if I just put in the 1,000? That's fine. I'm just going to make it 1,000. Yeah, that's going to raise. I'm not limping. Help, uh, help explain for us the differences between GTO, which is game theory optimal, and exploitative as far as strategic approaches in, in, are concerned in as simple a way as possible. The strategy that Doug Polk had been practicing and to, co to come into this match was a game theory a optimal like strategy. Yeah, yeah, Didn't say raise. We're good. And what that means is that he was trying to adopt Call a strategy. Me asked me the other day, he said, Doug, what odds would you give me in a challenge where I get no time to study? I was like, Phil. Well, in the same format, 25,000 hands? Same format. I was like, you can, I'll give you 10 to 1, Phil. He's not allowed to study even after the match starts? I don't think he wants to study. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> but would that be a stipulation? I, I guess, no, he would be allowed, I think, after it starts. I think it's tough for him to study. It's hard when you know everything. Yeah, when you're already the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So a game theory optimal strategy is when you adopt a strategy that there's no way you could possibly like lose. Yeah. Right? If your opponent, no matter, the, no matter how your opponent plays, you're playing in such a way so as to not be beaten in the long run, right? You would, could, of course, lose due to variance, but you have adopted a strategy that no matter what your opponent is trying to do to beat you, you are playing in a balanced way such that you cannot be beaten. An exploitative okay, strategy would be one where so. you look at the oh, yeah, deficiencies of your opponent's before. game and you take advantage of them. Yeah. Got it. And therein lies the studying component, which so Helmuth apparently right? wanted to avoid 41. altogether and try to get a price like 10 to 1 from Polk. Might be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Five, six suited, flopping a pair and a diamond draw here, but out kicked by the eight, six suited of Polk. Yeah, we got a huge pot brewing here where Polk, three bet pre flop, Daniel Negranu called both players. Loving their suited connectors, or in Doug's, to count. In Doug's case, a suited semi-connector. Doug electing not to follow through after the pre-flop three bet. Instead, yielding to Daniel, who bets a very modest 1,700 into the pot. Doug makes the call, and Daniel has him drawing <laughs> dead, courtesy of this queen of diamonds. Now, how does the sizing weigh into Doug's perception of Daniel's holding as we see Daniel checking back with the flush, and look at this, eights and sixes for Polk, who's got to believe this is the best hand here. Oh, Lee, look at this. Doug Polk, Rivers 2 pair. Daniel Negrano checks back the turn after he had done something similar in the first hand against Doug Polk. Maybe what he's thinking is that Doug Polk's going to try to be a little too aggressive, try to take advantage of these spots where Daniel Negrano is checking back super strong. That is a very textured card, however. 9-10 has gotten there. 4-5 has gotten there. And these 8s and 6s are far from unbeatable. How much is it, 17? And Granu taking very little time to carve out a raise here. Boy, eights and six is just not a very comfortable hand to hold here. You're not blocking any diamonds. You're not blocking the four, five, nine, ten combos, which would make sense. Flush. Flush is good. And the quick call, leaving Polk with less than half his starting stack, just seven hands into the match. Right, let me see how much I have. We're going to add 20, I think. Uh, right. That's right. 10, 15. No, we had 30, I think. 30? I think so. Okay. So a top up from Polk here. You can tell in Polk's voice the frustration coming into this match as the heavy favorite and already losing two massive pots to Negranu. Still so early, however. How many hands left? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and obviously the pace of these hands will accelerate dramatically once they step into the online arena, where I understand they're going to be playing two tables at once. They are. And that could factor into 
things as well. Polk, 31 years of age. Daniel, 45. Obviously, some of the stamina and some of the acuity associated with youth could come into play. I, I know in my 40s, I couldn't multi-table online I'm like I used to in my 20s. It's worse at it. It's way yeah, harder. It changes, it changes a good amount. It's way harder. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a mixed bag. Players already worked out that throwing a 1K chip out there will constitute a raise Check. on the button. No need to declare. Paired rainbow flop here. Advantage ace four. Daniel picking up a gut shot straight draw on the turn now. Still no betting. And Daniel binks the six. All right, check. Yes, I got the pairs. So some really interesting lines being taken by Daniel Kane. I think you'd agree. And they're going to set the tone a little bit for him to be able to take advantage of situations where maybe he is light to put some bets in there and look credible. For sure, for sure. I'm a bit surprised, Ali, that Daniel did not go for a value bet there with a pair of sixes on the river. Doug would have been uh, pretty pretty tempted to call him with his ace high in a check down pot on a paired board. You can already tell this I'm early the into the out. match. Negron, you really depend on if we have like a bunch of hands like the eight, the when we just play with the flush or the maybe there's a bunch of raised folds. Yeah. So I don't know. I think probably like I think we're playing pretty quick. So I'd say like a few hours probably. Forty hands. Forty. Yeah, I think so. They also have two decks shuffling. It's kind of good. Negranu, you can already tell a little more chipper, right? And Doug Polk, you can tell is he's a little bit irritated by how this match has started, right? They call them chirping chips for a reason. Sure, sure. He's already added on thirty thousand in for a total of eighty. You can see the running tally. Yeah, there's some there's some matches where I think like you need to have a shot clock, but I don't think this is. Yeah. I don't think this is. I mean, listen, I I always believe that. You shouldn't punish people who play quickly before flop and on flop who need a lot of time on the river. Yeah, that's Because it's fair. like, that's the whole, but with people that just take 30 seconds to raise with ace-queen every time. I, I also feel like when you add a shot clock, you kind of incentivize people to- They do, yeah. To use it longer. all. You're right. Pocket fours for Polk. Not a horrible flop for him. Two sevens and an ace with two diamonds. Daniel's check. Draws a C bet from Doug. Just 450. Daniel's going to tear one off with queen eight of clubs. Obviously troublesome if you are up against the ace and you improve. He has no diamond in his hand as the nine of diamonds hits the turn, and he checks once more over to Doug, who checks back despite holding the flush draw. Queen. And Daniel. Sort of proud of the queen high on the end there, understandably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really did. <laughs> uh, honestly, if I, if I check fast, you probably lose. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two pair yeah. wins. It's fair. She thought so, too. Yeah. <laughs> you thought I won with the queen high? Yeah. It's a good hand. Given some of what these two exchanged on the road up to this match. Really strange from, are, have you been quarantining or you've been? I've been pretty quarantined, yeah. I mean, over I Twitter. Been like hardcore, but. Yeah, I've we've been, been pretty hardcore. I've been like. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I have some friends that are like really, like, they don't really care that much. And then I have other friends that are going hardcore, just like not going outside at all. I think it depends who you have in your life that if you have people in your life that are high risk yeah. and you're around them a lot. Sure. I do, so I don't want to be stupid, especially when I don't have to. This feels very safe, at my, you know, getting the test and all this. Well, yeah, we have to get COVID tested just to sit down. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. safe, right? Are you at all surprised at how? It wasn't hard. It wasn't the nose. I heard the nose. Jovial they seem? Yeah. I was, I was a little worried when they. I didn't want to do that, the yeah. nose thing. Ali, they, they certainly don't seem like Two people who have been feuding for the past decade. No, it's uh, 
it's shocking almost if I described everything leading up to this and then I showed you this I tape, you'd be like, like that's not the two guys we were talking about, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, there's no string raising happening. I, I think it's yeah. stupid rule anyway. King 8-6, two hearts here. Got shot straight draw for Daniel. Ace high in the lead. $600 C-bet from Doug. Daniel will tear one off. Plenty of equity. King doesn't help his causes. Checks once more. And last time Doug C-bet the flop, it was 450 into 1800. This time it's 600. And if we get to showdowns, do you think these are the sorts of discrepancies that Daniel's going to be logging in his head as to what they may infer about Doug's Strength and range? Ten high. Absolutely. We want to stay consistent in these situations then. Yeah, yeah. Polk checking it down there with the ace high. And to, to kind of piggyback on what you were saying earlier, yeah, I mean, I even in the there. weeks leading up to this. <laughs> I'm going to talk. I want to lock up the lead. You know? oh, I, I go see. bluffing off all my it's money. A it's a little early to lock up the lead. I, feel <laughs> I, mean, like I can play real tight. So I, I was doing some uh, some calculations on that. It's like actually pretty hard to like fold for a win. Like you could play yeah. more conservative and stuff, but... You have to get really far up. That's what I thought. Originally, yeah. when I saw the guy Vinny Vitti, I was like, what didn't he wait earlier? And I'm like, oh, whoa, that would have been $600,000 worth of Vinny's. It's really expensive. Yeah. The banter between these two players right now at the table. I, I, I do want to say, if you get up huge and start limping the button and folding a bunch for me, I will be on instant tilt. I mean, that will be, <laughs> that is on the table. I just, we did, uh, that yeah. is on the table. That's, Makes that's it difficult fair. to finish Eliminate sentences in the booth. Is that what you were going to say? <laughs> All in or fold? Four, four. Oh, that would be... Yeah, that would be really. And you could just say YOLO. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting, yeah, Ali, to hear if any jabs are going to be thrown. Gets down right. To that. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't go that direction. It does sort of demonstrate, though, how different the online streets are when it comes to these beefs. Did you and see the conspiracy guy video? I watched it's easy. Someone sent me a video of a guy had a conspiracy theory. Oh, to rattle oh, something off the, in a that tweet. That were like secretly in cahoots, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, or to yeah. do a video, but to actually sit across from somebody. I was like, socially you distanced. That, you, you definitely haven't you. been around us. Yeah. And carry on that degree of vitriol is a whole nother experience. You know, there's always like some conspiracy theories, though. Yeah. Before the match, Daniel did say about Doug, he's been very tough talking yeah, online, but when you see him in person, he's much Great. softer. Not in my opening That's range. typical nice. of most That's online trolls. Off. So what, what was the what was the uh, idea with Good trolling read, with those Twitter polls? Which ones? Oh, it's just I just it's funny because every time I do that with the most basic. Questions. It's amazing that I got four options, and I find that the majority of people get the absolute worst one yeah. of the four. Yeah. I just, I just think it's fun when random people go, "Oh no, you gotta, you, you gotta fold that one. You don't want to play that queen six offsuit trash." A lot of experts on the internet. Race to 900. Yeah. Doug going with his standard $900 open with the jack eight suited. Nice flop for him. Queen's up. Now we see a third size being submitted. 500, 450, 600, 500. Jack kicker no longer in play for Doug as the ace rolls off. The check back might leave Daniel feeling good about King High. Especially on this run out. King High. Eight. Wins. Yeah, so far we've had a lot of these type of hands with like a middling pair versus like a King High like or a Queen up? High. Hmm? You look, you I like actually it? really am liking it. I and mean, a I'm lack losing, of value betting I on the river. I never win <laughs> right. in my practice matches, but it's fun to, you know, I don't know, learn. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you can so accurately like study things, you know. You can like really know the answers to situations. Probably a lot more today than when you were. Oh at, yeah, dude. The, there's like this like miss like idea people have about me that I was like using all that stuff. I, well, it I didn't was, really exist all that much. It didn't, no. But it is cool seeing some of the stuff that I used to do ended up being correct. Really correct. Yeah. yeah. 
That's what Phil Hellmuth's been saying for 20 years. Is every time GTO yeah. figures something out, they prove that Phil Hellmuth was right all along. I don't think I don't think that he was right all along. He is right about some things that you that would blow your mind about. Like he does well, he doesn't do it right, but there is a like for tournaments because that's all he plays. There is an Olympic strategy for like 15 big blinds. Yeah, no, that's which that's, is crazy because I never would have thought that made. Yeah, I don't think it's think it's his limping strategy though, but yeah. No, but it, there is one. That, that stacked up is just weird because like raised folding is so brutal. Check. Raise pot. No pair anywhere. And no betting on the flop. Same case on the turn as the deuce rolls off. Doug sprinkle something out there and drags this one. Did you watch the Antonio Phil stuff? Oh, you should have. You would have enjoyed it. Was it good? You would have enjoyed it. You would have. Maybe I'll check it out. You, it, it's, fu it's fun to watch. They're fun because they, you know, I, have I, long I, history. I think I know the result. And I, Antonio's like real tilted, right? Yeah, they both. Yeah. They both played interesting styles. I played he, Phil heads up once. I heard he uh, torched you. He torched me. <laughs> uh, not, not the, not the result that I was hoping for. And then after it, he like tells you about things you did wrong, and like, and, uh, thanks, Phil. Yeah. Six seven out flopping Jack seven here. I take that back. <laughs> Jack's, <laughs> Jack's beat sixes last time I checked. Small $400 bet gets called by Doug. Neither player holding a spade in their hand. Yeah, based on what we've seen from Negranu, I'd expect him to check back that turn very frequently. See, it was a clairvoyant declaration, Kane, now that the six hits the river and Polk How has How do you trips. do that, Ali? <laughs> Listen, if I knew how to do that, I wouldn't be in here. <laughs> I'd be out there. So Doug goes from defending, check so calling, and check computer to just tell you how much it is, and the number in the pot and everything. All right, so that so was leading uh, out for a meaty 1900 into 2800. Certainly, there's some storytelling to be done on this board. Yeah, Spades Negranu, and trips are plausible. Negranu calculating his odds here. The fact of the matter is. It, With 19? a pair of jacks and a 19? pair on the board, it's just you got to make this call a lot of times, and he does. He gets the bad news. He was trying to sniff it out, figure it out, but he just has a strong enough hand there that you'd expect him to be calling. Doug can have a lot of hands like 7, 8, 7, 9, 8, 9, a spade. Well, here is the great Phil Helmuth, who dominated Antonio Esfandiari during high stakes duel rounds one through three. Talking kindly about Doug Polk. Here's Doug as a four to one favorite. Seems high, and he'll bet on Daniel at four to one. <laughs> Phil actually texted me to try to help get some of that action stuff, down like, for him, and uh, couldn't figure out what the right shipping and handling would be for that. I understand he already managed to get down a decent bit. Phil feeling pretty confident in his friend Daniel Negranu in this match. Well, you're a pretty no, no, no. prolific no, 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 handicapper. You like a good no. proposition bet. I know you're a numbers guy. If you ran a book, where would you set the line here? Obviously, just an objective. Absolutely. I, th I do think that where the markets have been this makes thing, sense. I, I, I like think somewhere between six, four five, and five to one would make I'm sense. Sorry. No, I meant from like my chances to win. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured you said. Yeah, no, I was <laughs> like, like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait. No, How can he have want, that hand? Not what I wanted to see. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly with the 25,000 hand sample, fair. those live markets shouldn't be adjusted. Over two pair, it was like a, All yeah. too much, despite yeah, Daniel's zero. early lead. Ali, are we watching oh. High Stakes Feud or <laughs> yeah, How to I Win know, Friends I mean, and Influence know. People <laughs> in 2020? What's going on here? Uh, listen, I would rather see this, to be honest, than to see them at each other's throats. I don't think I can handle any more negative energy 
in 2020. I so this is a welcome, refreshing But this change. was quite a rivalry. I mean, sure. I was expecting Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier, sure. not Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Right. Well, everybody's ears are intact for the time being. There was a little blip on that radar <laughs> of your analogy. Here we have Daniel with a pair of eights up against a gut shot straight draw for Polk. Or LeBron James and D. Wade. How about that? That's a good one. Yeah. Friendships and sports. That's what this is butting into. Well, let's see if Polk is going to be friendly on this turn, though. He knows he is not going to be able to win at showdown. It's very unlikely, unless he hits a 7 or 4, he does have a gut shot. This is a decent hand for him to have in his bluff range on the turn. Wow. And Daniel content to release the 8s in the face of that second barrel. Granu is playing a little bit on the snug side, both in terms of value betting with strong hands and in terms of continuing with his middling type pair hands so far in this heads up match. Daniel did mention that he watched Phil Helmuth and Antonio Esfandiari and Helmuth did several things that would deviate from the first hands are kind of weird. Professional because, like, consensus is being important. No. But they're not. They're Optimal. Not, yeah, like, you're going to play so many hands. <laughs> Olivier Bousquet That's notably weighing in and, and taking the opposite start, stance to Phil Galfond, who had levied praise upon Helmuth for his performance. And I think one of the beautiful things about Heads Up Poker, Kane, is the fact that there isn't one approach that will prove successful. And especially in the live game, there really needs to be that inexplicable quotient for the decision heads that up, heads up can have makes no sense to stuff. someone. And that's yet you're saw, sitting there and you go, feel a little more yeah, this hand's about no the match is that like, I saw some stat that said like the f a favorite could potentially go on like an 80 blind downswing. Yeah, no, definitely. Seems crazy. A a 80, 80 is really big. Well, that's so. like the extreme, yeah. like in theory, right? Not likely. But. Uh, so I think, I, yeah, I think you're right. A lot of people don't know, realize how much luck's involved. So I think over like my whole career, I won at like 10 big blinds per 100. And I, I, I never had a downswing like that, but I, I had a few like 30, 40. Well, if you win at that rate, then you've made a really good bet. Right, from the four to one. I think I'm slightly winning from 10, yeah. That's, I think that's what you, you need to be. Yeah. To be winning. I, I said this to like, I said this in a lot of interviews and stuff, but it really, it's really about like how good you get, you know, like, People keep, yeah. like, ask me, like, what do you, like, how good do you think you are? How often do you win? I'm like, well, I mean, I, I'm going to play good, but, like, I don't really know, you know? Mm -hmm. so it comes down to your work and stuff. I saw you say that. It made sense, you know? Like, you're going to just gonna be good. Like, how much difference is, there's not a lot, yeah. not a lot of variance in where you're going to be, but. It's like, be psychic. Tell me how good Daniel's going to be. Mm -hmm. Kind of hard to do that. What do you know about how much side action, as we see Polk picking up two black aces, Either no, of these players have. Oh, I don't care. No, no. There. Oh, you just oh, hate baby. to see it. On themselves. I hate to see it. Played a few pots. Let's get something going. I think I, I think Doug has quite oh. a bit of action from what I hear at four to one. I know. I um, hate to see that. Yeah. You know, he Laying. had some action. I don't. No, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> Playing four to one, I know he had quite a bit against Bill Perkins. And it's funny, I'm one of the people who spoke to Doug and asked him. You know, like how likely cool. do you think you are to win this yeah, match? So and he told me he thinks he's between good. 75 <laughs> and 90 <laughs> percent, depending on yeah. how Daniel plays. Well, I wish Let's we could balance. reach out and ask him if Daniel's playing how You're he expected Daniel game. to, I'm better or worse. Game. Oh, the Obviously, game, yeah. 30 hands in, you know, can't be too that's results thing oriented. That's about right. the match, is that, you know, typically you would have, like, stats that you can look at. Yeah, no. And now sure. without that, it's a little bit flying blind. I, I have never played a match where I didn't have stats. Yeah. I didn't. I w I've always had stats. Well, those stats will be back in play once they're two-tabling online after these 200 hands are done. But it is Old nice man, to see them operating in sort of way, that right? purest I realm I, without I all not, of those. I'm not playing like that. <laughs> 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 if you hit big hands, you're going to win some stacks. That's, okay. that's the guarantee. But yeah, the stats thing, it's it's strange because normally like when you play, you then you study. Right, then you, you can like, see like what's he doing. Yeah, right? what's he doing? How's he playing this? 
Like when you were playing that sauce guy, right? Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Daniel Negron, you mentioning? I played him years ago. The competition between Doug Polk sat down at and Ben Solsky sauce, and I kept yeah. getting it in with happened in 2013. Nines, and he always had kings, and he beat me for like 300,000. If there's someone you don't want to play at that depth, yeah, it's him. Guy. Because like he has such like a good like theoretical understanding of like what happens as like things get deeper. He was using some really smart stuff as yeah. you got deep back in the day. Like when I was playing him, he was doing some things that I saw now that I was studying. I'm like, oh wow, he was like way ahead of the curve on this that I, I didn't realize it was happening. Oh, oh sweet. Doug Polk says that that is the well, proudest guys. moment of his poker career was beating Ben Solsky in that heads up match in 2013. Been an online legend. It's nice to collect those sorts of line items on your resume when you're looking to prove yourself. Yeah, Polk ended up winning 37 and a half buy-ins and 15,000 hands in that match. And he's, he's trying to repeat that here against Negroniu, but so King. far it's going the other way. King high beats Queen high. Thank you very much. Yeah, Doug quits. No, no, I think he's coming back. Oh, from Starbucks? Yeah. Well, guys, the long-awaited return of high-stakes poker is almost here. The first of 26 all-new episodes featuring fan favorites and poker legends alike is going to debut December 16th. A little stocking stuffer exclusively here on Poker Go. And I, for one, am looking forward to that very much. Seeing some tweets out there from the action from Tom Dwan and some old familiar faces from when poker used to excite us in a different way when we were shorter in the tooth. Eight, nine against queen seven here. Open ender for Daniel, he see bets 400. Doug's gonna tear one off. Board pairs. Spades and diamonds both possible. Daniel checks back, does not improve. Queen high is best. Daniel taking a hand he's very unlikely to win with at showdown and betting the river. The problem for Daniel is he's not representing very much. But it works out. Daniel Negreanu takes down another pot. Pretty tough to call with queen high there, isn't it? Especially given that Daniel has established credibility despite well, checkbacks on the big, turn. Just it is. Throw it away. <laughs> yeah, Doug Polk has seen has Daniel check learn. back those yeah. turns with hands like <laughs> even Crip Sixes maybe. It definitely has been fun to learn. And every time I learn something new and I think I'm like, got it, I realize that I know absolutely nothing. I, I saw your, I saw your uh, quote where it was like, the more that I learn, the less that I know. Yeah, Someone made a meme of that on uh, the poker subreddit. And it was like 2011, Negreanu. I've learned just about everything there is to learn. To <laughs> Fair. The more I learn, the less I know. That's or whatever the, clear evidence. Whatever it was, the quote. King five, deuce, two clubs here. Daniel with a big hand. Both players have the four for backdoor straight aspirations. Doug's seabed of 600 gets flatted. And that third club will create some additional comfort for Daniel. Two quick checks on the turn. No improvement to the 10 high. Will it be given an opportunity to bluff? The answer is yes. King. It's good. Bad kicker. You can't bet without that. Yeah. Oh, shit. I had the king of clubs? I thought I had the four of clubs. Not that it matters. Are you going to run the old man meme the no. whole time? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the old man meme? We're going to run that the whole time? No. Just like, hold on, hold on. Let me get my newspaper first. <laughs> 
king, it's a top pair. Can you really bet with that? You know? Well, we, we, we would get, get raised. And then oh. What do you do? It worked the first time. I'm not going to just keep going mm. to the well. I see. Patience. Yeah. Trap them, you know, because they give you the chips. They just give you the chips. Raise and take it for the queen deuce. Early takeaways, Kane? <laughs> so far, Negranu is playing a little bit more passive than I would have expected. I played. Yeah. It's, it's a lot different now. I bet. People Not better, value betting that pair of kings, that last hand. Like more similar now. Checking back similar. some strong yeah, hands, which has worked out for him. That, you know, you can learn easily. So it's, yeah. Like back in the day, people had more kind of styles. Yeah, I, pref I kind of appreciate, even before you, when poker was just figured out without yeah. it being, you know. Totally. But it is interesting now. The kids can learn without, quote unquote, poker talent. They're just good at studying something. They can learn and be pretty good. The, the skill set's very different now. Yeah. It used to be like you need to be creative and sharp. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like it's like you need to have like a really good ability to learn and implement concepts and stuff. Yeah. Right. And how about Doug? Doug has it's been very difficult. playing it's similarly different. to what I would have expected so far. Well, poker never used to be a game where you could play a hand ask your buddy, and there's an actual answer. Yeah. He's always like, I don't yeah. know, maybe I would do this, maybe I would do this. And now it's like, well, do this, period. Yeah, there was opinions. Right. Now it's kind of like, I mean, there's some slight things that are different, but yeah. yeah. But in general, you can see like a baseline for like, okay, well, this is what a computer would do. Right. That's changed it a lot. Doug Tolk cites software and game theory optimal strategy basically coming close to being solved to Lee is one of the reasons why he got out of poker. He used to enjoy the creativity of needing to come up with I it himself. And he kind of <laughs> started to move away from poker <laughs> so over the past uh, couple years, getting into more his YouTube channel, his crypto yeah. channel, sure. a little bit into politics recently. And... Uh, now he's back for the past three months, from what I understand from everybody I've spoken to. Doug Polk poker. has been very, very committed to this challenge. Yeah, he's been playing a lot of warm-up matches at low stakes. Well, against I bet there wasn't going to be this summer yeah. a variety of well, opponents. I, was, I didn't bet very big, but like people were offering me 20 to 1. I was like, certainly taking I'll things seriously. I'll take some 20 seriously. to 1 on the thing that I think is like 50-50. Like <laughs> now, where I really made a mistake was Perkins offered basically infinite action, at giving 5 to 1. That there wouldn't be a World oh, Series wow. poker, so I didn't take that, which was a which was a pretty colossal error in retrospect. Six seven suited bets. And I played takes Perkins that a bunch, by the way. I've heads up lately. Did you? Yeah. How is he? Is he getting better? <sighs> no. No. I mean, I, <laughs> he, he, you can, he can handle it. Like, oh, I know he can handle it. I'm not trying. He's to, not like a sensitive. He, so, okay, I'll, I'll give him this. He's definitely willing to put you in some really tough spots. Yeah. Uh, and he has funny moments. Like this one river, he like bet kind of small, and I raised for value, yeah, and he just good. bombed it. And I was like, what? And I, and I called, and then he just had some random bluff, and he was. He just said in the chat box, "Caught speeding." Yeah, that's <laughs> about right. I'm like, okay. Caught speeding. Yeah. Caught speeding. He's a fun guy. Yeah, it's an interesting dude. Have you read his book, Die With Zero? I haven't read it, but like, I mean, obviously. I have to get it again, because I, he gave it to me, and I can't find it. Mm. Paging Bill Perkins' the, the, publisher. The, I, I think I understand <laughs> the gist of the concept he's going for, and I, you know, it makes some sense. Bill Perkins is in the middle of his own heads-up challenge right now against Phil Galfond. They've started it off. They've played a couple hundred hands. Perkins is down a little bit, but they're planning on continuing that online challenge in Omaha. Really? Omaha. I think that's part of the reason he bet on you. Oh, because he's... <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just like, eh. This guy's not good. Are, are you, you've been beating him? I mean, like... Small. Yeah, like, it's like some small number of buy-ins. And that Perkins match, part of the overall Galfond challenge, where Phil... 
It's one you of those shoot an open call. At one or two hundred, so the number sounds just like a lot more like. Yeah, yeah. Picked up some money, but some opposition a... in a lot of those matches. Yeah, absolutely. But has so far emerged unscathed. He as has. I understand it. The, However, he is down to Chance Corneth right now. Chance giving him a, a run for his money. This is really stupid and very old school. But like the diamond flush I had against you, the last three diamond flushes I had, I was beat. I had king high flush. I had things. So now I don't know. Maybe I checked because oh, I'm like, I was scared. Oh, I, I was like, what? Diamonds never win. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Like the last session I had, it literally happened twice in, I, have, I took video of it just in my phone. Twice in 15 minutes. Ace high flush versus king high flush. I, and then, I'm not buying this, this chick. No, this is true. I have it <laughs> okay. on my phone. I could okay, even okay, show okay, it to okay. you. Okay. Just saying. That, that's not why I checked the diamonds, but it like yeah, no, did okay. dawn on me in my head. That's I'm like, wow, this diamond flushes, man. They're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Real solid logic yeah. I got. Still not my understanding. I can't help it. Listen, I got old school brain where stupid stuff like that pops in. I try to clear myself, zone out, woo, but it's there. How, how have you been uh, how have you been doing with two tabling? Have you been finding it like easy to do mm. or? Okay. Yeah, I was thinking maybe down the road if like I get super comfortable and we have plenty of time, we could add one if we're, sure. if we're lagging. But yeah, it's, it's I mean, pretty two, comfortable. Two to three is my, my comfort zone, so I'm, I'm fine just doing two. Uh, if you want to do three, that's cool too. Two's good for now. Raise the 900. Raise the 4,000. Ali, did Negranio just casually say he'd play more tables? I'm not sure if how closely you've been following the negotiations around this match, but everything had been contentious leading up into this match. I can't think of one thing they agreed like, on. Yeah, whatever you want. It we is could strange. play three tables, four tables. Well, listen, I think... Whenever you want to play, Daniel. Uh, whatever is best for you, Doug. I think what's best for Doug is more tables. I think that he is more equipped to multi-table online at this stage than Daniel would be, but obviously Daniel could practice and, and try to bring himself up to snuff. Well, so far the cards have not been falling in Doug's favor. We do have a three-bet pot here where Negranu three-bet the ace-jack, got the jack-high board and checked over the flop and is going to take it down here on the turn. Yeah, two sixes aren't going to be thrilled with that board texture. Fairly easy release for Doug. When I played well, against, well, briefly, when I was trying for that Isildur thing, I was doing four tables for a bit. Dude, against, I tried it against Nanako. That, oh, Nanako, yeah. He, I've never seen any, uh, uh, he doesn't, he, he, he actions on four tables within a quarter of a second. It's yeah, I, I, I used to battle him a bunch back in the day. We had some, we had some Nobody's, he was, he was lightning, wait, I played different people. I played Bonomo, I played Kane, I played a bunch of people. Okay. And they were all reasonable speed. Nanako is another level of insanity. Yeah, he's, he played really fast. Daniel DeGranio did play me when he was getting ready to play Victor Blom. We played a, played about 1,200 hands at 50-100, yeah, yes. and he beat yeah, me for about three and a half buy-ins. Do you feel like you got off easy? <laughs> or were you thinking you were going to relieve him of some buy-ins? Uh, that's what I was hoping. We didn't right. play enough hands for me to really size up his game, but what I can tell you is some of the more interesting heads-up hands I played were against him. Two eights for Daniel here on a 10 high two club board that doesn't improve Doug, but he does have the king of clubs and the five of diamonds for some backdoor prospects. Doug Polk taking a very low frequency three betting hand here and, and choosing to go ahead and three bet with the king five offsuit. We are starting to see some inflated pots pre-flop now. You wonder whether or not there's a gear shift or if it's just a function of the holdings. $5,400 C-bet on the flop. And Daniel makes the call. Sort of a sinking feeling for the King-5. It's going to want to pick up some equity on this turn in order to allow a second bet. And the Three of Clubs certainly is the sort of card that creates that opportunity. Yeah, when you three bet with King five offsuit, this is actually a pretty good board for you because there are a lot of turns that could give you a straight draw or a flush draw. Doug Polk got one of them and he continues to fire here on the turn. The bet though, 6,000 while bigger than the flop bet, certainly smaller in relation to the overall pot size, less than one third.
And oftentimes when you see sizing deviations that are more on the modest side, you have to ask yourself if this is me being induced to call by a very strong hand or if this is just a hand that doesn't quite want to barrel away a big commitment but would love to take it down here because it's light. Negranyu very deliberately lets it go. He folds the pocket eights in an effective I bluff. I him back in the day. By Polk. It was like one of my biggest hero calls I ever made at the time. Against not no, One no over no card and yeah. no club Randy. in his hand. Yeah. We were like over 200 blinds deep. I threw it king queen. He called. It was like 10 7 4, I bet. And he like snap called. So like when you play people that play that fast, mm -hmm. you can get like really good timing calls on them. Um, and so like just the way that that match had been playing, I was like, this guy just doesn't have top pair. I just, it, it, it just, I just knew he didn't have top pair. Like I think he, he was raising those a lot. And so I thought like he would at least consider raising. Yeah. The turn was a, like a low brick, like it was like a deuce or something. He, he checked, uh, sorry, I barreled the turn. He called and then there was a 10 and I checked and he snap jammed. And I was just like, I'm just not buying this at all. <laughs> I'm just not buying what you're selling. And I called and you just had a brick straight draw. But it's like, I feel like back in the day you had more hands like that, where it's yeah. like, he was probably just way over bluffing there, you know, because like he's not balancing his calls and stuff. Yeah. Whereas you're never getting spots like that nowadays. People are going to like, they're going to play like somewhat good, you know? Yeah. They're going to know to trap some. And well, like, good, the definition of good was different. I remember when I played bottom, I, this is before bottom movie came in. I bought him, beat him for like 17 buy ins. Wow. In like four hours. Wow. He was crazy. Oh, yeah. He bets, so he, he before he got good, because he got he got very good. Yeah. But what he used to bet like way too big constantly, like all over the place. And so it was like, when you played him, you just had to be ready just to buckle your seatbelt and yeah. just like, you know, pray. Press the call button. Yeah, press the call button. He got he got a lot better though, obviously. Polk with top pair here. Nine do suited on the button, put the raise in. Does not want to put in a C bet. Doug picks up the gut shot straight draw as the third heart rolls off on the turn. Okay. Still no betting. Board pairs on the river. Now Doug will do his own betting. Interesting to hear the guys discussing other players who at various times over I the last a lot too, 10 a lot to 20 years yeah. have established great names That's for themselves. There's another guy who played real fast. Mm -hmm. Bonomo, Negreanu talking about playing against, and they both talked about Randy Liu, Nano Noko, his online handle, who was another played, legend, who I'm guessing you played with we both played of these guys online over the years? No, I played with a ton of hands him, against like, sure Nano Noko. Anybody at those stakes did, because Nano Noko played millions and millions of hands. Sure. He's just a big always, that's always tough to play against, I think, when you're like not really. Well, what, what was he doing? <laughs> yeah, it was like a, it was like a 1098 board, and we were pretty deep at 400, 800, and he like bet flop. I called, and then the turn was like a low brick. He bet turn. I called, and the river was a six, so it makes it straight with a seven. He just jams pot. I call, and he has jacks. No, I think he was bluffing. I mean, but it's a weird. That's a it's weird. It's a one weird to... bluff, though. It's a weird bluff because I can have a 10. You know. Maybe like, he thought you might hero. Just with like a pair. Yeah, I mean, I guess to be fair to him. Maybe I it was a bet, value bet. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I, well, I, I mean, I couldn't figure it out, so. Yeah. Who knows? Doug Polk taking his turn with a nine deuce suited here, defending the big and picking up bottom pair on the queen high two heart flop, which favors play? Negrano. I feel like I haven't heard about him in a long time. I think he's playing online. Ali, give me a price on Daniel Negreanu being the uh, next actually, upswing like, kind of fun coach. Back in the day, just like seeing what he was doing, like, like what stakes he, he'd play like a different game like every day, and he'd yeah. be playing like a different opponent, I mean. super high stakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. I don't see it happening. I think as we see Doug having hit the trip deuces on the turn here. This could get interesting after the ace hits the river. Yeah, both players check the turn, and Doug allowing Daniel to fire this river. 
especially given that Daniel has shown he's willing to bet these hands on a delay in the River Street. Right, the reason why I like the check by Doug is because Daniel has taken hands with no prayer and kind of checked back the turn and elected to bet them on the river. Hand like eight high, um, we'd expect Daniel to show up with here. But Daniel actually has a real hand that he was value betting. Now facing the check Six raise from eight, Doug, five, right? what's going through his head is A, what are my pot odds? B, there was that first hand that we played where Doug checked, checked, and then check raised the river with nothing when Negranu, of course, had the pair of kings. This is a little bit of a different board texture because when Doug Polk does call the flop with bottom pair, it does make sense for him to take this line frequently with trips. So it's, it's 85, yeah, yeah. And Negranu lets go of the queen with the overcard out there, the ace. And obviously the possibility of king, jack, or trip deuces are better in there. Yeah. Poker After Dark is coming back with a new season of 52 all new episodes featuring today's biggest poker stars and celebrities watch the premiere of Poker After Dark season 12, December 13th, exclusively on Poker Go. So plenty of holiday cheer on tap as we head into the Christmas season. It can really vary though, like if we play a bunch oh, yeah. of, yeah. It just takes one river jam and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this might slow down a little bit. A couple gonna of big hands going to face off here. Oh, yeah. We're going to see some fireworks here. Likely a call by Doug. Yep. Three bet pot. 8K in there. King 10 3 as Polk out flops the ace queen. We've seen Daniel throughout the course of this match go with these very small sizes, especially in bloated pots. This time he opts for less than a fourth the size of the pot. He has 1,600 into 8,000. Doug is going to flat. Good looking turn card for him given the preflop action. The three doesn't rate to affect matters. Daniel with the nut no pair and the Broadway draw is going to continue, it looks like, or maybe not. Oh. Seemed for a second there like Daniel was going to put that bet out there and then thought better of it, Kane. Interesting, and I wonder what Doug is going to make of that apprehension. Genuine or feigned? In this case, of course, it is genuine. We see what Negranu is holding, and it makes sense to really think about this spot, because in a way, you want to bet, because if Doug Polk has a hand like pocket sixes, pocket fives, pocket sevens, even a hand like jack nine that would have called the flop with a gut shot, right? Those are all in, they're, they're not going to continue on the turn. But then again, if Doug had any pair on the flop, those hands are, of course, continuing. And remember, Doug's range opening the button is fairly broad. And that three bet sizing to 4,000 wasn't necessarily enough to clear everything, but the most premium of hands. So now we've seeded the initiative to an opponent in position who has fired 7,800. And at this point, I'm just not too sure what Daniel's thinking about. Yeah, you know, he lets it go. It's going to be fun to watch this later. 
Not Breaking fun to get moved off of ace queens, but he was right there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, I guess I should like pretend like you're not. Yeah. And, and, and. Well, I guess actually, let me take this back. I don't know what you had. Right. So, I mean, but, but if you fold, I didn't I have mean, a king. Yeah. I mean, obviously. I had a pretty good hand. I almost bet. I almost bet, and then I was like, no, 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 wait, just check, see if he bets. I shouldn't no. say there's no price. Mind. Maybe yeah, he will I, be an upswing I, poker coach when know, this like, is all over. Like I have no idea. Reads, like when you that would have meant something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is a prelude to that press announcement. <laughs> we tried to rip each other's heads off for months in advance. Then we played online for 25,000 hands. And then I realized, you know what? I want this guy in my corner. A master class in how we can all come together. There you go. I feel like we could use one of those right about now. OK. King high. Too bad. Ace Deuce binks the turn was well, always best. Here's another interesting part. Every time that Doug Polk has ever sat at the live poker table with Daniel Negreanu, as far as I know, he's been wearing a shirt that says mockingly, "More rake is better." Certainly, in the televised occasions the that he has sat with him yes. since yes. that statement, so yes, that I do believe he has skewed toward yeah, the "More so rake is better." Game. This time, Doug in. Polk with a, a blank $2, black $2, plain yeah, shirt. Yeah, I played some before. You think some thought went into that? Yeah, you want well, something that draws your eye to the upswing enough, poker yeah. patch and well, nothing to else. Me they didn't mm. until I got a little better. Yeah. Although they all seem the same, just good. <laughs> Check. Yeah. All spade, jack 10, six board. Check. Under pair to the board, but the lone spade in this face off belongs to Negranu, which is still best as of the turn. Second check draws a $1,200 bet from Doug. Call. Daniel will call. Now a fourth oh. over card to the fives. Bit of a weird spot for the king high. Not going to feel too great about showdown, but One certainly minute. could suspect that another barrel might clear a decent amount of Daniel's range, right? Yeah, I, I like this bluff quite a bit on the river. He does go for a little bit of a smaller size here, which makes sense because when Doug Polk checks back the flop, he's kind of saying, I, I don't have a that. flush, no, or okay. I don't have a set, <laughs> or I don't have flop okay. two pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even though it might not have been, I mean, even though I followed I should, the best I hand. I should phrase that differently because yeah. it's like I'm implying that your decision is based purely off what I have. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, I, I didn't have, didn't have if it. If I had there. my hand, they, I would still fold. All right, probably but good then. I probably had the best hand, but that's okay. Negranu is, is in general running. playing more yeah. snug yeah. Than, yeah. than I would have thought. I've been there. That was a hand where, I thought that Negranu would, would certainly think about looking dug up or perhaps even making a raise with a spade in his hand. Yeah, and he did have the fives, which were relevant as far as some sort of backdoor straight. Blocking Doug Polk's ability to have those backdoor straights, which, of course, in heads-up poker, those type of hands could be in Doug Polk's range. I really shouldn't have gotten 25. So somehow in my mind, I'm like, yeah, and then I'm going to use the 25, so I'm going to be calculating, and like, the pots, I'm like, fuck, what's in the middle? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what's out there. Right. You, it, it can, I just basically ignore that they're there. Yeah, no, that's, that's <laughs> fair. When I count, I'm like, all right, it's about eight. In my mind, it was going to go down a lot different than... Yeah. Then it was going to actually go down. Well, things have certainly equalized a little bit since the early going, where Negranu jumped out to over a $30,000 lead. Doug ended up having to reload. And now the lead has shrunk to just 6150 for Daniel. Make that 7000 but effectively pretty far off his high. Oh, another good button fold. Big one. Yeah. Tens so what did you think about the, no the betting the odds? Do you think that they were fair? I think, I thought, I, th I thought, I mean, again, it's going to depend on how much better I get in the next yeah. month. Yeah. But I think four to one, I mean, it's a good gamble. I don't think it's a bad gamble for either side. I thought five to one, I'd, I'd like my side, but I don't know. <laughs> four, four to one was like slightly good enough to where I wanted to bet. If it had been much higher than that, I wouldn't have wanted to yeah. take much. Nine hundred. Four thousand. 
read that and take it for the kids. I don't know. I don't know. It is hard. To I know. just listen to other people. And sure. I watched Jonathan Little's video where he said, "Oh, if you do this and standard deviation and big blind," I'm like, "Okay, well, that sounds good for me." Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I saw that, and like I think his like estimations on deviation and stuff were off, but oh. I can't remember the specifics now. We saw when Polk three bet the also, pocket my, aces pre flop. He higher, showed no Daniel. Players, Daniel so didn't show the pocket kings. Future, maybe yeah. a difference between an online and, and live pro. Daniel not wanting to give anything away to Doug. Now Doug out flopped the ace queen with king queen, and here he is out flopping a king queen with king jack, going from top pair to trips after they both check the flop. Daniel does have the gut shot straight draw, but hasn't bet on the flop or the turn. Now the board double pairs. Granu sticking with his high frequency okay. flop okay, and check. turn check. check back strategy. Ooh, baby doll. Feel good about this one. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Oh, yeah, I, about that. <laughs> I almost bet the flop and they're like, wait a minute, you don't have a straight yet. <laughs> nope. It gets a little frustrating when you're out there playing heads up oh, no baby. limit, Kane, as you know, when you're up against an opponent Bullet dodge. And it feels like they're just not giving you any opportunity to take big chunks of chips off of them, even when they've got big hands. And especially when you're down, as Doug was early, it can feel like molehills or mountains. Yeah. I have a feeling in this you match, know, Doug is, is going to man, make a lot of his hand, chips by winning a lot of small pots. <laughs> and I don't think <laughs> Doug is going to be uncomfortable okay. with that. That's good. Good card. That's good. That's what TJ Kluche used to do back in the day. He was a master in playing tournaments where... He would raise your big blind, because that was a big thing, you know, to steal your big blind. And then, you know, he'd show you the ace. Always show you the ace or whatever, right? And then there'd be a hand where he raised your big blind and, you know, he didn't have an ace or whatever. And then he'd muck his hands and goes, did I ever tell you that time about da da da? Sort of, you didn't notice oh, that he didn't show you that one time? Because he showed every hand. 1,000. Yeah, the problem with that is then, like, when you don't have an ace, what do you do? Well, then he didn't, you tell a story. Right. So you distract people. Maybe Doug could launch into a story on the heels of this three bet and try to get Daniel into a call, but the 10 5 buckles. I have it every hand. I had air, like really bad hand. I'm supposed to be winning stacks right now. I'm supposed to have stacked you three times, hitting the, hitting the cage. Opportunities wasted. All right. Luckily, randomness doesn't mean it's not going to keep happening. Nine, right? Ooh, trip Check. sixes for Polk. Five hundred. Negrano's going to peel one off with that king of diamonds and some backdoor straight opportunities. One of which comes in on the turn. But unfortunately for him, if the seven rolls off on the river, it'll be disaster. Especially if off suit in variety. 1900. $1,900 bet prevents Daniel from seeing the river. Doug Polk telling Daniel, I'm supposed to be up heaps already. How Everybody the in the poker series? community believing that Doug right? Polk I, is going to be a big winner in this I mean, match. I cashed every day. So far, I it's been pretty close. I yeah. times. Never won anything. <laughs> Just there was like yeah. some, there was some rage tilt video I saw on Reddit. Oh, oh there was a couple. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I, I like, you know, we basically quarantined in a house down there. It was nice. She likes being by the beach, so. Nice. It's a nice spot. It's unfortunate that. What, what part of Mexico? We're in Cabo. OK. It's unfortunate that you have to leave the United States to. Yeah, I'd be a little worried to, to travel with, like, all the stuff going on. I know uh, Dee went down to Mexico, and I think he got 900. COVID while he was he down did, there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we traveled private. Well, we never yeah. left the house. So. Not bad. Daniel, of course, referring to his wife, Amanda Leatherman. They got married in May of last year. That was a fun wedding. Were you there? I was there. It was a good time, Terranea huh? Terranea Resort down in uh, 
in Southern California in Palos Verdes. And there were some videos from the dance floor that were circulating on social media. There's some uh, good times were had. I will say, now. though, that the vegan life food Cabo. did leave me at a drive through yeah, after the wedding house. just uh, to get something. adequate oh, yeah, caloric yeah, intake. Mm -hmm. And I've never experienced that at a wedding. Golf but course community. You great. haven't adopted the vegan lifestyle, Lily? Not it. Not me. Maybe it'll be a government yeah, mandate at some point. <laughs> As our aggregate O2 levels, levels dip go. down from... I have a feeling it'll get I've in. Been doing my part. Maybe I'll learn <laughs> to breathe <laughs> cow <laughs> methane. Maybe That's I'll just you. subsist off bovine no. farts. I did have one. No? <laughs> I have been Can't your fund invest in, like, bovine respiration yeah, I got the, I technology got or something? Like, bovine waste respiration technology. That's... We might we might short <laughs> we might short that <laughs> company a league. Ah, <laughs> 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 I mean I'm hopeful. I knew you were I sharp. Think, <laughs> like really obvious. I think it depends on the vaccine, and it seems like there's making a lot of progress. That in the early spring we should be, you know. I don't think it'd be a good idea to I, do it I if we the, have to do plexiglass and all that craziness. I heard a vaccine is, is days away, weeks away. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Is it is it May? With the health care plan. Is it yeah. May yet or? <laughs> yeah. Ace 10 against two queens, the rich part of the Doug deck, would top love this set. If we go down that yeah. road. Right. For Daniel. Doug Polk saving himself some chips here. Ace 10 is a hand that these players have three bet every single time out of the big blind, except for this time where Polk just flats. This was one I would have liked to put folds. all of your money in. And lets it right go <laughs> immediately. Everything. Look oh. at that. All the queens. All the queens? <laughs> all the queens. Oh, you can man. Add. Very disciplined oh, play for you to maybe I, have some. by I, I Doug Polk. Saved himself some chips. A lot of stuff you could have had. That would have been fun. Uh, I could have gotten, yeah. Well, obviously, you don't want to sure be guilty of the doing the same thing every time. Think, like. Especially over the course of 25,000 hands. It's hard to know like, how legitimate to take that, you know? It's hard to know if you, yeah. Like, I, like, I've heard, like, stories that are optimistic, but then time goes by, and you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's really likely. Did you have or, any COVID-related like, prop bets? In what time frame, you know? No. Mm -hmm. None. How about Vaccines, you? Vaccines? No, no. No. It's a little bit too morbid, I think. Sure. For me, for my taste. And I'm a horrendous prop better anyway, so probably best to stay out of those waters. <laughs> yeah. Now, the closest thing I came to a COVID-related prop bet was I, I shorted the market. You know, I, I don't short the market often because I, I believe that the U.S. dollar is one of the riskiest assets you can have. So I want to be in equities. I want to be in equities. But right. I shorted the market in early March because uh, every epidemiologist in the world was saying this thing's going to spread to 70, 80 percent of the global population. And the markets were all but unmoved, right? Maybe they were down 5%, 10% at that point. Um, so I went in, shorted casinos and airlines. And Things that you thought would be adversely affected by. Yeah, yeah, and that, that ended up being a, a good trade. Well, I also uh, shorted the markets, Kane. Um, not in early March. I, uh, I decided that we were incurring a dead cat bounce. But that feline was frisky. <laughs> and... Uh, I think we dusted off 60% of the portfolio on the ride up before oh, I pulled man. the ripcord and said, nope, nope, <laughs> no more. When do you start doing that around? Oh, I want to say. Late April? Yeah, somewhere yeah. around uh -huh. there. That sounds about right. Might have been early May, too. Early May is when I went back to being long. You need to consult me on these I, decisions, I am Ali. happy to get with the folks at Crystal Oak Capital for all future <laughs> market moves as we see Negranu going long on ace-10. He has flopped himself top pair and... Polk going to tear one off with that seven, which turns into a gut shot straight draw on the turn, which gives Daniel top two pair, two flush draws on board. Be interesting, Ali, to see here what size Daniel goes with, if he continues to go with the small size. Okay, he goes with 2,100. This is a board that has, uh, you know, two flush draws on it. There's a whole lot going on. You can have a ton of straight draws, right? Generally, you'd see a player go for a it's larger size right on that side. board, and Daniel okay. Negreanu does I, size up there. I, I couldn't sleep as well either. I was excited I about this. And I, yeah, same. And the other stuff that was going on in the, in the world, the, uh, the horse racing match. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The skiing? Yeah. I'm also a skiing fan myself. Yeah. 900. It was a slippery slope. They were uh, sliding down. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was some turns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Bumps in the road. Queen nine suited, taking on Jack nine and turning into Check. top pair for Negranu. Check. A lot of reluctance to bet top pair in either position thus far. I think much more content to put their action in in later streets, sometimes delayed even to the river, as we saw in the very first hand of the night. In by Negreanu with the Kings. In general, yes. In in this situation, Negreanu was the out of position player, so he made a standard check on the event club. Or even holidays or anything I'm doing, I just if I'm like excited, I just I just struggle to sleep. Exactly. So if I, I ever have to get up early or anything like that, and I I sleep usually like a baby, but it's tough last night. I, I wouldn't say my sleep is like great. Like I definitely have like some regular sleep sometimes, but if I have like a thing that I'm looking forward to, I just it's over. Yeah. I just can't sleep. I was thinking about every hand. Don't check raise them with this. Bluff with that, call with this. Oh, never bluff. Don't do that. None of that. Yeah, the stuff. stick again. You're right, you're right <laughs> on the stick. <laughs> I can detect when the stick comes on. <laughs> I mean, Help me understand a couple of pawns ago. Mm -hmm. Doug with the queen seven picked up the gut shot straight draw. Granted, there were two flush draws on the board. When you I do know. pick up the equity and then you choose to check fold, is it because it wasn't necessarily to watch in the pursuit of over, equity? That you tear Poker one off, it's more to, to see what your opponent does on the show, turn and maybe try to seize the initiative on the river. Raise, I fold. Yeah, yeah so there are some times where stuff. picking up it's equity isn't like enough, right? There, like there could have been better cards like for Doug, of course, a queen. And Doug has also noticed probably cool that Negranu has like, played a little bit more passive, right? So when Negranu follows, fires multiple bullets, Doug Polk is happy to let it go. You want to see it in real time. Because you never know, it could be this hand. It's different than like when you. Like if you watch a poker tournament that has a one-hour slot, you know it's and there's be. six people left, you're like, oh well, this is it. He's gonna lose this hand or whatever. Someone gets ten, you're like, okay. Yeah, this <laughs> is it. Someone's gonna have ace king, and someone's gonna go down, yeah. And you can tell who won the hand based on who had more chips. <laughs> like. Oh, I didn't actually ever think I about know. that. That's the problem. It's like you know this is the last hand, and then this guy has a two-to-one chip advantage. Well, he won. So what's the point of watching the hand out? Yeah, it's like the 56-minute mark. Yeah. Yeah. Big pot brewing here, Ali, where yeah. Daniel Negranu three bet the suited connectors. He's known for loving these hands in his poker career. Oh, he's not alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Polk flats the pocket tens, and there's the continuation bet. And with the two paint over cards to the two tens, obviously Doug is going to have some concern. Yeah, but against Daniel's sizes, he bets 1,600 into 8,000. It's just going to be a no-brainer peel for Doug on the flop. Now, the ace on the turn is an interesting card. Obviously, any one of those three overs could be in Daniel's range here as a three-better. But Doug blocks 10 jack with the two tens and could potentially try to represent Broadway at some stage in this hand. Goes check, check. Now on the river... Daniel knows six highs never winning. What's he going to do? Step away from 11,200 and wave the white flag? Certainly doesn't look that way. What's really interesting here, Ali, is the last time that Negranu did that and he put his chips together and kind of shuffled them. He was contemplating a bet and he ended up check folding. I wonder whether or not Doug Polk will pick up on that. I don't believe that hand got to showdown, so I'm not sure whether or not Doug... But the fact that Daniel ended up checking and then right. folding his hand meant that he didn't have a very strong holding. And also, Daniel's been fairly content to take middling sort of hands, like a queen or a king on this sort of board, and just check them down. Yeah, but Daniel has also taken this line time and time again with his bluffs, right? He's doing this thing where he bets the flop, checks back the turn, and then fires the river when he can't win, and it works out for him. <laughs> I don't like that. He didn't like that face, I don't huh? like that. He didn't like the sneaky old man I face. I don't like that. He didn't like the sneaky old man face. <laughs> it has now it been two times where Negranu like, yeah, has really 10, taken so his time, put his chips oh. together, and then put it uh, either put it out there yeah. or checked 
with a weak hand. Not, not my run out. But when no. Negreanu has been strong, not he tends to for. be playing pretty fast. He tends to be just put his chips together. Normally, it, it tends to just be yellow chips he's using. But when he's bluffing, he mixes in these other chips. I wonder if we're going to continue to see that from him or if it's just something he's doing to try to throw us and, of course, his opponent dug off. Not to make a meal out of it, but... He's also sophisticated enough to be self-aware. And if he caught himself guilty of that behavior and is thinking to himself, what is that exuding? Right. Maybe I'm going Sorry. to employ it on, in a future spot when I'm strong. Certainly that was not one of them. But he'll also be watching this back, as will Doug, undoubtedly, to try to pick up any and everything that they can, though they will be shifting to the online streets, certainly from a beyond the live tell perspective. There is the rundown. We talked about it at the onset of the show. 200, 400, no limit, 25,000 hands. You can pull out at 12,500 hands. Wave the white flag if you like. And these first 200 hands are coming at you live here on Poker Go. The two table factor is going to be the one that's really interesting to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and of course that... Uh 12,500 hands being able to pull out. That's only if you're down, right? Doug Polk has already committed. He said he doesn't care if he's down. He's going the distance. Daniel Negreanu said he's likely going to go the distance as well. But if he's down something like 20, 25 buy-ins after 12,500 hands, right. well, maybe he'll change his mind. There may be some people out there who have enough side action to uh, place a call and ask for the continuation of the match. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we pick up the action where... Negranu has aces and sixes. This is a three-bet pot. Negranu made it 1,000 on the button. Polk made it 3,800. Negranu called the 2,800, and here Polk is check-raising with the two fives. Obviously poorly timed. Negranu going nowhere. I think Polk actually three-bet in continuation bet. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, Forgive with the me. pocket fives. You are right. He bet the 1700 and Granu made the call. Okay. Look at Negranu continuing to play passive on the turn, whether he has nothing or whether he has a hand as strong as two pair. Possibly in the hopes that he can get Doug to feel better about whatever he is holding enough to possibly bet. And certainly that kind of run out does rate to have Perhaps connected with Doug's range in some way as a three better pre? Well, here's here's where it would make sense, Ali. If, if Negranu thinks that Doug Polk just over bluffs the river, right, then Negranu taking the strategy where he's checking back all his strong hands and very weak hands just to catch Doug Polk bluffing when Negranu is very strong, mm. that could play to his favor. So far, we haven't really seen Doug go completely bananas on the river, right? We did see it the first hand when he had ace four, sure. and Polk even said afterwards, man, that was an exploit. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Right. I wonder if maybe the runout were a little different, not the queen and the jack, but a card that completed one of the open-ended straight draws that might have made sense. An 8-9 suited. A 5 or a 10 rolls off, and suddenly Doug puts a heap of action in there. And you start to wonder if a6 is good. But Here we are now, king-9 suited. Flopping middle pair up against the ace. 1400. See, bet and take it for Doug, who is down 18,650 yeah, nice before that is it's so easy to know what the stacks are. Yeah. You just, like, see the number, like, okay. Whereas, like, now it's I, like... That actually, that's, for me, I've been playing live and left. Yeah, maybe maybe easier for you, then. You just have to all, really eyeball one stack. Oh, I guess it's true, because only I've added, right? So it's 120 in play. So, okay. That makes sense. 1,000. And Daniel Negreanu cannot get away from his low-suited connectors. He loves these hands. He calls the three bet. Both players with stone nothing. This is why I love heads up, Ali. Yeah, these are the interesting pots. Ace, king, jack, rainbow. 
3,800. And there is the advantage of taking this part of the deck and 3-betting with it. And let's check in with Doug, who had some thoughts on whether or not this thing should be played out live or online. Even when I was playing some live, I didn't play a lot of it. Realistically, it's better for me to this to be online, straight up. Like, it's just, I, I have a better edge there. That said, I do think I can compete and win in a live format. And frankly, it's just going to be fun, man. When I heard this was going to be, there was going to be a couple hundred hands of live, I'm just picturing showing up and playing some heads up poker. And it just, it sounded like a good time. And I'm happy to, you know, give up a little bit of edge for, for some lulls. Such a difference in going to games versus watching games. Yeah, it's probably games. the biggest discrepancy. Here. I think so. I'm going to for it. Because you go to games, like the atmosphere, the ice, like everyone's excited. It's like, but I, for some reason, I just, I just have a hard time getting into it when I'm watching it on TV. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, that makes sense. A lot of people are like that with hockey. Just a fun environment, especially well, at the yeah. night's games. Yeah, yeah. One thing that's really crazy, and this just happened a couple days ago. So in Canada, they're obviously COVID strict or whatever. They're, they're COVID what? COVID strict and, you know, oh. sensitive. So they're starting the OHL, which is the Ontario Hockey League. And the government has said, you can play but no body checking, which is hockey without body checking yeah. is bizarre. And so they're thinking like, it's just a weird line to draw where you're like, okay, you can stand next to each other in a face off. You can breathe on each other, like, but you can't knock your shoulder. Like that'll be it. That like that, that doesn't make sense. It makes zero sense. It's just one of those random things. Like, you know, I, I, I was shocked to see that. They're like, so you want to play with no body check. That's actually bad for their development too. Yeah. Cause it's the developmental league and it's like... Is that like a feeder into the NHL and stuff? OHL or? is juniors, basically. Oh, okay. So it's like younger yeah. players. So it's for younger guys. There's some older, over than 18, but a lot of young guys. Did you play hockey growing up? Um, I mean, I played road hockey, but I couldn't skate. Ace king for Polk and the big here. 3,800. I can't ice skate. Three and take it. Like, I have, like, really weak ankles, and, like, I get out there, and I just can't even, like, I just can't even move. It's like... I didn't grow up with it. But played street hockey every day. Looked up at a tennis ball. Ali, you strike me as a guy with strong ankles. I appreciate that, Kane. I, uh, I definitely have ankle day at the gym. <laughs> it's weird. People look at me funny. But uh, I'd hate to be out there on the ice, as I'm apt to do, and, uh, and suddenly just buckle <laughs> under my skates. That would, that would be no good. Check. <laughs> Is King Deuce here? King four for Polk, the best hand. Negrano has flopped that Broadway gutter. And on our next high stakes feud, Alina John versus Doug Polk in ice skating. I'm telling you, give me an arena I can compete in. <laughs> Somewhere where my physical attributes can <laughs> come into play, <laughs> being the imposing <laughs> hunk of man that I am. I think I'm supposed to pay you. This one. I feel like you have a king, but I cannot beat a king or an ace. King. Oh, that's good. I feel like you have a king. It's all right. It's what I, I do what I do. Say what he has and pay it off. <laughs> Some things never change. Yeah, that's one. Poor river for Daniel, forcing Still him really to pay silly off. Folding, I was man. surprised he didn't play high poker. I was focused on this, and I didn't want to be around a lot of people. I wasn't going to play, and then like every time I talked to Maury, he's like, you know, we have a great lineup. She definitely, and I like stopped by for the interviews. He's like, check this out, Doug, come over here, come over, you're gonna love this. And he like shows me like, mm. he's like, eh? And I'm like, all right, Maury, yeah. fine, I'll play this session. Oh, you played? <laughs> I played once, yeah. I didn't play. I played. I'm uh, looking forward to watching it with a, without knowing what's gonna happen. That's kind of fun for me. That's true, yeah, that's true. And just be a fan. Those, those iconic, those were some great hands back in the day. Oh, yeah. I had plenty. <laughs> I'm aware, I'm aware. This is the first broadcast from our studio where players have not been forced to wear masks. Both of them took a rapid COVID test prior to play. Obviously, there's some distance between them. And see, the dealers are still in there, PPE. Kind of nice. <laughs> to see it back the way that it was. And speaking of the way that it was, high stakes poker, once upon a time, the pinnacle of cash game action on TV. And it's right around the corner. The first of 26 all new episodes debuts December 16th exclusively on Poker Go. Save $10 by using the promo code on your screen. When I grew up and before me, and there's, you know, it's respectable, but it's also way less fun. <laughs> 
It's tough because like it's just there's not there's not as much opportunity as back yeah. in the day. So I think like some people just I mean if you want to be competitive and play at a high level and try and like you know be a high six player, you have to really, really you know go after edge I think to get there. Yeah. I think the problem is when it gets like super predatory in like high stakes games. It's like that's one of the reasons I never got into like the lives. I didn't want to like do all the like schmoozing. Yeah, and, like, I never did either. I, I just don't want to do that shit. I've you know? even been offered seats in games and said no, because I don't feel comfortable with like the whole environment. Yeah. I don't need it, so I don't want to. Yeah. Involved. I don't want to owe a guy a favor because he let yeah. me play in a game. I don't want to have to like, you know. Say Bill Perkins is great at heads up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to have to say I get that. I your point, yeah. Yeah, just. Not, you, know, you can be friendly with people, but it doesn't have to be disingenuous. I, you're like, yeah, I would rather just have an honest relationship, you know, like. I would have played that one. Fair, I had seven deuce off, so I don't think yeah. we were going anywhere with that one. Been a lot of that seven deuce floating around. I think there's like a lot of people that like, I don't know, just ride coattails and stuff in poker. I just always try to like do my own thing, you know? It's changed again. Where, like back in Doyle Brunson's day, you had to be a nice guy to get into games and schmooze. And then that stopped and now it's somewhat going back to that at the high stakes. Ace, eight, three, all hearts. Both players with a flush draw and Negrano's got a pair coupled with his. Polk a gut shot to the wheel. Yeah, really interesting board here on the monotone heart board with Polk having the four of hearts and a gut shot. Grania's second pair, but of course the ten of hearts. And as we can see, even though Polk does have a gut shot, his flush draw is dominated by Negrania, so he only has 13% equity. Oh but my goodness. That. After that modest raise from four to 900, in slides the deuce of diamonds to give Polk the wheel. Daniel obviously not drawing dead. What kind of sizing will Doug go with after he has gin the turn? Twenty-seven hundred into thirty-eight. Oh. And if we're Daniel, we're not all too concerned about Doug. Having the flush here as we see the deuce of hearts come in. It isn't four or five of hearts. Daniel now with the best hand, 10 high flush. What do we make of that small check raise on the flop and what it tells us about Doug's holding? Yeah, it's something that solvers are doing more recently is doing these this tiny I'm little, sure almost like a I minimum a check heart. raise. I got a good heart. Well, a decent heart, yeah. Oh, you had a wheel, jeez. Bailed by the river. Yeah, I was bailed by the turn, it's really. Yeah, yeah. All right, you were pretty dead on the turn. Easy, easy. On the flop. Easy, come easy, go. Go on, Kane. The solvers are the doing solvers, a lot of that. The solvers are doing a lot of the minimum uh, raising or, or one quarter pot type raising on certain board textures. The monotone board is, is one of them where um, there aren't that many hands where you're comfortable uh, committing a lot of your chips, uh, but you do uh, want to, with some of your range, raise so that you have aggression going into the turn so that your opponent, especially when you're facing a very small bet, can't just dictate the action. Right. Picking up the action here. Paired flop. Polk hit the five. Went check, check on the flop, and 1,200 on the turn gets the job done. Nine total bracelets spread across these two, six and three respectively. But 42 million plus over the course of Daniel's live tournament career have been compiled. Just a staggering figure. Oh, yeah. Daniel is third on the all-time yeah, money list. To be good. He has 45 WSOP yeah, final tables. Good. Being friendly. <laughs> That's remarkable. I mean, you know I'm good at that. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, Just about any stat related to the WSOP, Daniel Negrani was in the top ten. Does it surprise 10. you that I didn't manage to network my way into all of the... 
High stakes games? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say surprised. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if you did get in those games. Cool. Daniel defends 7-8, flops middle pair against ace high. Round to knuckles. Got shot straight draw added to the mix for Daniel. Eight. Checks it all the way through. Would you like to see Daniel do a little bit more betting there on the river and potentially get value out of those ace highs? I would in general. That spot was a little closer, but there certainly have been some hands okay. where I think Daniel has missed a bet on the river. Oh. And I wonder whether or not Daniel is playing a little okay. bit more so passive coffee, now than um, he plans to in the future, kind of giving a little false to advertising one. to Doug. I mean, I hate doing that because if it's far. Yeah, I mean, I would never want to do that. <laughs> See, I'm not one of those people that would just have you run all the way for a nice coffee. In fairness, you didn't know it was far. Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't either. I I, I I I did feel like I was starting to be the starting to be kind of a dick though, but it was like oh. like oh it's kind of far. I'm like ooh. <laughs> uh, I know bad. what I want. Well, I know what you generally don't want, and that's to be dominated heading into a flop, as Daniel is with queen six against queen ten. Both players with gut shot straight draws. Really interesting flop here, Lee. Daniel Negreanu with the straight draw and the backdoor flush draw. Doug Polk with the gut shot to the nuts. Oh, and in comes the seven of hearts, the best card in the deck for Daniel, who has a redraw to a queen high flush, and it gives Polk a two-way straight draw now. Whoa. We see Daniel continue oh. to check back. And disaster on this occasion as the jack slides in on the river, giving Polk the pure nuts. And of course, Negreanu is going to bet into this 5 Oh, my goodness, Ali. He can't possibly check back this, can he? No, there's no way. Daniel Negreanu is just thinking... What amount am I going to bet here? It's a 5K pot. I checked back the turn. 1,000. 1, Obviously, he knows any 10 has him beat, let alone queen 10. Going with 20% pot. But when we kind of fling that one yellow chip out there, do we not get concerned that the opposition might be tempted to represent and check raise us off of our holding? In general, that wouldn't be something that I'm too concerned about. I do think that Negranio could have sized up a little bit more here, especially because he's so under-repped having checked back the turn. Sure. 8,500. And the check raise is a big one. Yeah, it's a little bit more than pot. So I bet that, figuring you're going to do that, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Hang on. Let's block that. Oh boy, Doug's just praying. Daniel's got a 10 here. Oh, wait a minute. Well, maybe you have the same hand. No, you would never raise with that. Never mind. So it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 7,500 more. Seems like a spawn. Daniel needs to be right here about 35% of the time to make it a profitable call. Hulk, stony face, trying not to give anything away. Doesn't seem like Daniel's paying too much attention to his body language. Okay. How much is that? 70? 85. 85. Mm -hmm. 
Is there, though, a chance? Oh, he oh, does was... make the call, Ali. Oh, the queen, too. That was hard to have. Wow. I could have lost a lot more money on this hand. <laughs> There's six? I had better than the six. You had ten? I had, well, not exactly, but I had well, better than... What do you have? I had better than a six. I had <laughs> better, better than a six and a ten? You, well, you'll figure it out. Okay. Better than a six. Sixes. Better than that. What would be better than that on the turn that isn't that's jack high straight? You'll figure it out. Figure it out. You'll see. All You'll right. Figure it out. I'll see. Yeah. You know, is, I get so sweaty whether I like have a good hand or a bad hand. I'm just like always <laughs> sweating. You haven't figured it out yet, huh? I haven't figured it out. No. It's better than. Better than, a, better than a nine high straight, not a jack high straight, but it's still better on the turn than just a nine high straight. Here, <laughs> plus the straight, or what do you have? Uh, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> I, I like Maybe Doug so, doesn't so remember the had, board texture. Had, let's say you had a, a six, right? OK, yeah. What would be a ten. good card to have with it? Another six? Well, what does that do for you? <laughs> Well, Still have a straight. I mean, yeah, it doesn't really do much. What if you had a straight with other outs? You you're, you're straight and a flush draw. Maybe. Ooh, oh, there you. That's better than a straight. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I just thought you were talking about in pure showdown value. Right, I, no, I wasn't I'm, thinking about like. Just my hand strength was. Yeah. Good. Well, two sevens are good. On this queen nine five flop. It only takes two of the best poker players in the world to solve <laughs> that riddle, Ali. Right. Polk Tor went off and picked up the club draw on the turn. Right color, wrong suit on the river, though. Third over card to the sevens. OK. Jack guy. Sevens. Quick shutdown from Daniel. He rolls over a winner to begin the process of riding his ship yeah. after that Can payoff. Can I get a cappuccino with almond milk? I got like maximum owned on the flop there. If a little more, I could let go. Oh, with the sevens? Yeah. As we've noted, Ali, these two players have been, have been very, very jovial. Coming into this match, I mean, you wouldn't have expected for the words that were said to really <laughs> be between these two guys. Well, especially given some of the words that I know you're staring down oh. at in this Twitter timeline between the two of them. Share some of it. October 12th, Doug Polk. Let's get this straight. I only retired from poker for one time. I didn't play a single hand after that. The only reason I'm coming back to the streets is because a complete dolt wants to ship me a million dollars. Saying that, obviously, about Daniel Negreanu. It goes on. This is my last hurrah. I've done everything I want in poker. The only thing left is to take out the trash. Doug Polk about Daniel Negreanu. And so far, you think that these two guys have been friends their whole life. It is remarkable that Daniel is able to have the exchanges that he's having with Doug here in person, but it certainly benefits him, I think, flop. to not come into this thing with not anger and emotion me. and right. just my area code. be level-headed, clear-headed, and execute whatever his plan is. Absolutely. Here's one of my favorites. Right before this match, uh, done you know, a couple days ago in an interview, Doug Polk said, my goal here isn't to build a friendship that'll last a lifetime. My goal is to back up the blanking truck. Right, well, so far, Looks like he's, you know, he's down 12,000 in Agranu, but maybe he's building a friendship that'll last a lifetime, Ali. Or at least 25,000 hands. <laughs> it will be interesting to see whether or not this carries over into the chat box, though, on their online portion of the program as we see two suited tens collide. Polk C bets and takes it. Doug actually changed his Twitter, not handle, but his name to not just Doug Polk, but Doug Truck Driver Polk, Originally as I understand it, I alluding. I was planning on way more like 
to back the truck up. And like shenanigans. But then I just got to the point where I had so much money, I was like, I don't feel like <laughs> fucking around anymore. Yeah. I noticed One your t-shirt's pretty basic. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh. Even Negranu surprised by Polk, the troll, not showing up today. We're getting a much more tempered version of Doug. Sure. And from club draw to club and wheel draw for Polk. He decides to lead at the turn, and Jack 8 will comfortably fold, despite technically being the best hand at that point. I think we'd all rather hold that Jack 5 of clubs in that spot. The high stakes feud is raging on. The first 200 hands, of course, live here at the Poker Go studios at Aria. And then after that, there will be 25,000 total hands played by the end. The remaining 24,800 will take place online. These players will be playing two tables on WSOP.com. It's going to be so different. Two tabling heads up online for oh, two hours. Yeah. Right it's on cue. It's going to be so different. <laughs> It's actually more, in a lot of ways, way more comfortable because like, I'm home. Yeah. I got a new ch space chair. That's kind of comfortable. I think I saw a little I massager. Saw it. Has a massager in it? Just a little. Like it's not a great okay. massager, but it has a little going on. Just about a yeah, 26 a big blind lead table things for so lay back. So you're you're going to be like fully reclined. Well, not fully, right? but I'm going to I'm going to recline. I don't like sitting. Okay. 900. At a little over the midway point. <laughs> See, like, I, I'm, I'm not going to lay down, but I, I have to sit upright to be able to like think clearly. Like I feel like if I'm I, lounging, I I'm like I think you're probably right, and that's true for most It's probably true for me, but I just don't do it. I mean, do, do your thing if you if you like it, whatever you feel comfortable with. I don't you like know? sitting up. Pair of fives as Doug's king high out flops Daniels. Negrano will tear one off for 600. Check. Does not pick up a straight draw Check. or pair. Backdoor hearts come home. Check. King. Five. King five, the real king. Do you want to show, by the way, every hand? Like if, I don't care. Because if you're showing, I, I didn't show a couple times. So. Oh, it is no big deal. Okay. You're going to see it anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'll watch it anyways. Sure. Yeah, I'm but interested to see some now of the helps. adjustments and stuff you make along the way. I think it's going to be interesting. I, mean, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested too. Yeah, it's going to be, it's gonna be oh. fun. Hand like 10 6 offsuit. Certainly yeah, playable I bet, I bet out of the big be for a, lot a standard open, yeah. isn't it's it? A, it's I mean, a close I'm, one. I already know that from four weeks ago, I'm better than I am now. I was, yeah. I'm like, I would look back at that guy, I could beat him for sure. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's not I'm not going backwards. It's also one of those things, though, where it's like your first hour is your most valuable, and then it just, like, you're always improving, but your return, like, per yeah. hour drops constantly. Oh. Right. And I'd say it's a good fold against a two and a half uh, times raise size elite. It does change quite a bit depending on whether your opponent raises two times a big blind, two and a half times a big blind, or three times a big blind. Just to give you an idea, you should play about 65% of hands out of the big blind facing a two and a half times raise. And that number obviously scales down at the bigger the raise and scales up the smaller the raise. Yeah, so if we go to a 3x raise, you should only play about 50% of hands, whereas if you're facing a minimum raise, you should play as high as 80. I got a 9. Call. I, have a, I have a bad 9. Oh, want to chop it? Can we do that? <laughs> I mean, I think I have. <laughs> you got it. Does it. A bad, does it, not five plays, right? Five does not play. Or nine, Jack. <laughs> like, I've played poker play. before. Yeah, yeah, I've played <laughs> poker before. <laughs> I you know what's really sad? Uh -huh. I didn't fully know when you asked me. I was like, does it play? <laughs> I don't know. Yep. I really don't know. High stakes fucking poker yeah. over here. Like, man, we got to get in these games. <laughs> in these they games. Know what, what, well, on the internet, they just tell you. Yeah, that's true. It just says you win. I actually played a hand like the other day where I, like, check raise barreled off and got called down. And then, like, 
someone was like, hey, you realize like your kicker didn't play there? And I looked at it, I'm like, oh, oh shit. Yeah, <laughs> I did that too a couple times where I've played a hand online, I'm like, sweet. And then like I look back, I'm like, but wait. But I mean, then like you realize like actually I lost the hand. Oh, because of the kicker? Yeah. Well, they were just like, he called me with Jack High. I'm like, yes. And then I didn't realize Jack High was Jack straight. Like, <laughs> yeah, take it. Three bet and take it for Pulp. Uh, mm, 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 what games are Daniel playing in where he gets called with Jack High on the river? I don't know, but I want an invite. <laughs> <laughs> the tough thing, though, about playing heads up is if you go back to ring after, you're gonna wanna like. Oh, I remember when you played ring for the first little bit, you just did not fold. Yeah. You were like, I remember watching one and I was like, that's not good. You were yeah. like, it was six, eight max or something and under the gun made it like three and a half X and you defended your big with Jack Deuce cause fuck it. Cause yeah. I would heads up, so you're not yeah. bullying me. <laughs> and it was Robel of all people, I remember the hand. Robel raised under the gun, three and a half and you just, couldn't Pro help yourself. With Probably that. a little on the loose side. I, I I'm likely not making money on that. A little one. ambitious. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to win pots. What you hey, do? didn't come here to fold. Yeah. Well, we've talked about what percentage well, you should be because, defending like, back at. Back in the day, like people played way too tight in the big blind and heads up, and I was like one of the first people to play really loose, and it, obviously it was, it was very good at the time. I mean, yeah. people have gotten way better in the small blind. So it's like it's way harder to, to just play super loose in the big blind now because you'll just get owned by different stuff. But yeah. how should we approach 4, our frequency yeah, of playing hands on the button as we see Daniel three bet the queens and take it? Generally, eight about eighty five percent of hands. You only fold the fifteen yeah, that would di I mean, I percent think I worse too, hands when I was that you pick up on the button. And I was with the Isildur thing, and then I play live, and I was so slow. And it's like every time I looked at a hand that was kind of okay, I'm like, well, I can't fold this because I might not get a hand for 20 minutes. You're just used to the pace. It feels that way. And taking it a little further on the heels of having seen a few three bets, another of which we look to see here out of the 6-4 suited, what percent of your hands that you open with should you be defending with? They can't just only be the top tier hands, obviously. I would imagine you want to stay sticky with a certain quotient. Yeah, it really depends on the size that you're facing. If you're facing a pot size three bet, then in that case, you should be defending anywhere around 40 to 50% of your holdings. However, these players have been three betting larger than pot. So uh, probably uh, closer to one third of the total hands that you opened on your button would make sense to defend. You see Polk not looking to see bet the king queen seven board. When yeah, this is on the turn. This is just kind of like a no hope, no prayer type of board. Of course, Polk could have picked up on the turn an eight or a three or a five to all give him straight draws, but it's just not a very, very strong holding on this board. So Polk was just content to give it up. But let's see if he has different plans here on the river now that it's been checked through. This could still look very strong out of Doug. Fifty-four hundred. Fairly healthy $5,400 bet, and down goes 10 high. Also in heads up, you get a spot someone bets, it's way easier for them to find bluffs. So like, I just feel like yeah. it's more fun in a lot of spots, you know? Like I feel like in six max or ring or whatever people you want to call it. People just have it. People just have it, and you're just. Especially when you're playing Jack Deuce against the end of the gun, <laughs> that'd be really frustrating yeah. after a while. <laughs> Jack comes out, it's not good. What's going on with that? Jeez. You can play your nine deuce and, and heads up, and you know what? Your kicker might chop. Well, there you go. I once did that against a guy named Doc. He was a famous, well, triple draw player, which is whatever. And uh, it was on a boat, I'll tell you. That's one time. Two kings, two diamonds, and a jack. Flush draw for Daniel. Okay. Likes not to bet it in position. The turn, giving Polk a gut shot straight draw. He takes a stab. Thirteen twenty-five gets called. And the ace of diamonds on the river gives Daniel the six high flush. 
Four to a straight out there. Might Polk try to represent? Yeah, Doug Polk's going to want to bet this river because he can't win with his nine high. He has a diamond in his hand. Daniel Negranu checked back the flop, which makes it unlikely that Negranu has diamonds himself. Of course, we know here in the studio that Negranu did river a flush, unfortunately for Polk. And right when Polk started to claw his way back, he's in another situation here where he has nothing in Negranu with a strong hand here, the flush raising it up. Easy fold for Doug there. Given the fact that I was Polk elected. I was, I was green. I was like a rookie. I didn't think I'll about it. I wasn't Daniel that good at the game the story. yet. Triple drop. Drop Doc. So in the end, we drew. And it was like, check, check. And he said, do you want to chop it? And I had a pair of eights, which is like the, basically the second worst hand you could possibly have there. And I said, sure. And like not realizing that 100% of the time, he's going to have a straight, which loses. Like, I see. You know, like I basically had the second nut low in a spot where Nine the nut low is available, and I said yes to a chop where I was free rolling myself. So basically, the exact spot I just had with the nine when you offered me a chop. Kind of. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I was like, wait, yes, but exactly. I, I was like, like, but I also can't have a worse like nine. Like you say bad nine, I'm like, you want a chop then? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I can't, it's a free roll for me. I see. Cool. But he did it in a more tricky spot. The two sixes flat, look up at one over card as Polk connects with the four. A little bit interesting, Ali, to see Negranu flat the sixes in the big blind. You'd expect that to oh. be a pretty high frequency three bet. And look at that turn. Set of sixes. Flush draw for Polk now. Obviously, with the addition of the flush draw, Doug can feel comfortable about another barrel. Do you expect is going to raise it up here on the turn? I favor the raise just to hopefully create a price that's unattractive to some of the hands that could so easily beat us on a poor river. Yeah, I, I like a raise here quite a bit better than a call. This is, he does make the call. This is a board where, you know, if you have uh, certain hands like a flush draw plus a straight draw, you might want to raise up on the turn. But if you know the board's going to pair, Kane, <laughs> <laughs> which is a dream card for Daniel as he fills house. up. But we're both in agreement Can't that the check that. raise is yeah, a little yeah. more favorable in that spot. I was kind of in general, that. Daniel has been playing. Cannot beat the full house. Tricky. Trappy and See, not very aggressive. His, his aggression there. factor, that was a stat oh, online in back in the day when I played. Aggression factor. Diamonds Daniel's aggression very factor similar. in this very match similar. would not Damn be it, very high. Pair. Maybe if you didn't have a pair, I would have got a bet out of you. Yeah. <laughs> One what I do like about the flat, though, is there are going to be a lot of rivers if Doug were bluffing, that he would want to continue to fire on. right? If Doug had a hand like a gut shot on that board, or even a flush oh, draw. all the small pots, or all the pots. And the know, other flush draw got there, the or an over card to the board came, which was very likely on that board. Lines. Those are all cards that Doug might that is how the math follow works. through with on his bluff. Well, I'm certainly hiding behind your resume when offering any crit uh -huh. criticisms <laughs> that <laughs> we're in alignment on. And, and it's unfair to call them that. Obviously, there were advantages to what Daniel did there that included allowing Doug to continue to fire at that river. But so many cards could have made it a difficult proposition to call with, as we see 6-7. Turning in the middle pair on an ace-high board here. Check call the $600 C-bet and turn trip sevens. And the cards have really been following, uh, falling Daniel's way so far in this match. Now Daniel choosing to lead at the turn. Oh, yeah, he led yep. at the turn. That's mm -hmm. a move that we haven't seen a whole heck of a lot of. That's yet. the first time we've seen it. It does make sense on that texture.
That was the dealer cut audit shot there. <laughs> Make sure it's all clean. Guys are sort of falling into a rhythm right now. I think the pace of play has picked up a little bit. and We're starting to check to see how the flow of this heads-up match is, is playing out. It's been a relatively frustrating one for Doug, I think, especially given the expectations that were placed upon him going into the match by the markets and himself. His turn to flop a seven for middle pair and then turn an open ender up against no pair. Unlike Daniel, he does not choose to lead the turn. Daniel checks back, river pairs the board, and brings in hearts. Punting here, but no, you caught me. You caught the old man speeding. Clean yes, <laughs> yes, caught him speeding. Caught the old man speeding. Nice. Caught him speeding. Caught him speeding. Oh, I knew it was a shtick. <laughs> <laughs> caught him speeding. So See, Daniel, I should probably be. I don't know. It's took a shot for thirty-six hundred and did it's, get it's caught. Weird, that time. It's like we're gonna play so many hands. It's for a lot of money, so I can't say. I should probably say a certain. I have word this. I should probably not say things that are like similar to how I'm actually going to think. I'm sure you'd like. You, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, but it's good. I think it's going to be a lot of leveling anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, luckily for me, I don't really do the leveling. I just, I just do like the thing yeah, I yeah. think yeah, is. I so it's. Right. I actually had a lot of buddies well, that hit me up, and they were like, "So, like, what kind of like sick exploits going to go for versus Dnags?" And I'm like, "I'm just going to play good poker, and then like, think." Probably that harder too without the info, like yeah. the stats. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Because like you did with whatever name, you can see what he's doing and right. adjust. Well, like the people I played in the past, like I had, like I played Sauce a bunch before we right. played and the No, challenge. you didn't use solvers or nothing. You were just yeah. thinking, right? Yeah. 1,000. All right, I'm going to need some. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trade out two of my right, I got 2,000. Oh, okay. That's, that's perfect then. Oh, I see. Okay, I gotcha. Hundred and twenty-two hands in. Caught speed. Eleven K lead. Right, I'm, I'm confused. Grand. I gave him two K, and then I got sixteen hundred in my blind back. I'm, I'm a little confused. Yeah, so he, he won the pot. So he took the four. Oh, he oh. wins the pot. Okay, that's how it works. Yeah. What do you got for me on that Doug sense. Polk right, right? Yeah, sheet yeah, there, Kane? Well, Doug Polk was just that, talking the, uh, about his match Mickey against Gate Ben Solsky. He <laughs> said that that was his biggest <laughs> poker Gate. accomplishment, but it should also be noted Doug Polk does have three bracelets. I mean, you don't Speaking think of Doug Polk, Polk as a live tournament yeah, player necessarily, but three bracelets, that's a pretty big accomplishment. I'll bet you if you took all the guys, you know, the total yeah, number of tournament check. WSOP well, tournaments they entered and the total number of bracelets right, they so have, Doug like Polk's that. number of entries to number yeah, of bracelets is probably one of the best in the game. Sure, that ratio. Or was it for 500K? It was something like that, right? When you consider just how many events Daniel has played. I mean, such a dedicated schedule. He gets the RV out there behind the Rio and plays just about all of them if he can. Oh, well, Daniel's resume goes on for days. I mean, we're talking about a six WSOP bracelet winner. That means he's tied for seventh overall again, like, with nine of other people. Today. But he's won yeah. bracelets in multiple events. Down, and then, like, oh, pot oh, limit hold them, yeah, two yeah, and limit hold them, two and no limit hold them. <laughs> we talked about 45 <laughs> final tables, 168 <laughs> caches, putting him in fifth of all time, and it goes on and on. I'm still waiting for a double board Omaha event. <laughs> That's when you'll see me enter the fray. Perhaps a little drama ha deuce to seven, if the committee would be so inclined as to expand the schedule to include the good also work of the carnival. When you're two tipping online, <laughs> hands are so much faster Games. that like people are gonna get stacked, and then I feel like the action's gonna heat up a little bit, and like yeah, people get know. a little more yeah. emotional. 900. 
Of all of his accomplishments, though, Daniel did tell me that he's most proud of being able to stay at the top two. for so long. Yeah. You see so many people in this industry have a couple of good years, you know, a couple of good runs in tournaments, and then you don't really hear about them too much anymore. Daniel's been at the top for a very long time, and he attributes that to his ability to learn from people who are better than him, that modesty. And, and we've actually seen that for a long time. I remember back in the day when uh, Daniel Negreanu was getting ready for his heads-up match against Victor Blom online. Mm -hmm. He enlisted uh, Kings of Cards and Nuts Inho uh, to go ahead and help him with his game, some of the best online players. Of course, for this challenge, he has what he calls his advisors who have been helping him uh, the whole way through. Uh, they have remained nameless, and, and Daniel Negreanu uh, says that that's their prerogative to, to, to remain that way. But Daniel says if he does win this match, it is all because of the coaching that his advisors have given him. I think it's refreshing to see people who are at the top of their game not approach things from an omnipotent standpoint, but rather an open-minded one. Played a, I played a really fun hand against Helmuth on high stakes poker where oh. I, I really owned him. Did you, yeah. did you hear about this? No, no, but don't say anything, obviously. I won't, I won't say anything. Live. Yeah, I won't, I won't say anything. But, oh, just, it just... Oh. Anytime you get home, you know. It's the best. He's, a, he's my favorite person in the world to play poker with. It's always a good time. Ace eight against a six. It's amazing Test check on the flop the, and the middle pair, or rather. Oh, he pair. loves it. Like, he, he, no one cares more than he does. Like people don't understand. Like, turn. that's who he is. You yeah. know, it's not like it's like. It's not a show. It's not a show. Sometimes it's, you feel like. Thirteen twenty-five. Is it good? No, he loves it. Fifteen minutes back up. Break time? Yep. All right. So on the way to the break, Doug cobbles a little value out of his ace eight. Stay close. High stakes feud will be back in less than three minutes.
And welcome back inside the Poker Go studio here at City Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. 30x pot for the first leg of the 25,000 hand high stakes view between and I had Daniel two pairs. Like, <laughs> like Doug Polk, <laughs> Ali Nishad, <laughs> alongside pairs. Kane Callis. Just about two thirds of the way through these 200 hands that will be played live streaming here on Poker Go. 200, 400, no limit hold'em, a 50k buy-in. Nine, eight, five with two hearts favoring the nine, seven heavily, especially given. The seven of hearts is the only heart spread across the field. But on the turn, Polk hits a jack. Taking the lead against what was top pair and has now turned into top pair, a flush draw and a gut shot straight draw, two ways. Daniel just makes the call and does not improve on the river as the eight pairs. That'd be nitty. Ooh. Yeah. Damn, I flopped good, too. I had a big hand. Nine out of nine. With a heart and stuff. <laughs> Polk makes the disclaimer that it's going to be I, nitty I as he checks sure back and takes Probably the first fall. pot after the break. Not that you want to hear that. Yeah. But then you talk yourself into a raise, then I'm really Well, cooked. I can't raise it's my like, hand. I have I like, I had nine seven with a heart. <laughs> I mean, I could. I just don't see the point. <laughs> well, maybe I... I mean, I guess if I did bet. Ace five, raises it up, and uh, king, queen, nine, all clubs could be fireworks. Polk has flopped the flush with a redraw to a straight flush. Negreanu with the nut flush draw. No betting on the flop, and here comes Doug on the turn. Now in PLO, the dry ace play is commonplace, but in Hold'em, it's a little tougher to pull off. I see what you've been playing, Ali. You've been <laughs> two cards is too boring for you. I, I gotta tell you, can't do it. Used to be my bread and butter, but not anymore. And here Daniel is with that ace well, of clubs. This is not boring at all. Checking back the ace of clubs on the flop, then Daniel raising the nut flush draw here on the turn. And of course, Doug Polk right now just seeing pictures of his Brinks truck in his head. But how is he going to fire that truck up? A three bet here? I don't think so. I think he's going to flat here, let Negranu continue to bluff. Provided that Negranu unimproved indulges him, which is not a given. Safe river. Four, ten, four of clubs. There's 11,600 in this pot. About 45K left behind. Let's see if Daniel Check. Negranu pulls Flush. the trigger. He doesn't. He just okay. checks it Flush. down. Yeah, beats me by a nose. Just Doug hair. Polk wins a big one. <laughs> Thought about three bet in the turn. Yeah. And have we seen a lead change, Ali? Would have been an interesting card. You make a Just flush, right? going to ask you the same yes. thing. Negreanu was up 5K <laughs> at the <laughs> onset that <laughs> of yeah. that hand. I think that could be Based our first read. lead mm. change since the match has started. We'll know soon enough as you see the rundown there. Terms and conditions, so to speak. Everyone scrolls through those and cl just clicks accept anyway, right? That's what these guys did. They didn't debate anything. I did not fire on the river. <laughs> As we can see, Polk's name the up there for the it, first it time. Would not have gotten through. Yeah, I didn't. Polk didn't now feel like okay. eleven hundred so, uh, and fifty dollars. You know, not even a straight flush. No. But you, I have blockers to the straight flush. So. You did, so you have to just call and hope. Of course. Well, it's been the Doug show here in this second act. Backside of the break so far. Jack nine suited, dominated by King Jack offsuit pre, the standard 1K open. Met with a slightly sized up three bet to 41.25. And the Granu doesn't take too much time to 
call the extra 3125. And he has flopped himself an open-ended straight draw while Polk has top pair. Very interesting board here. Polk also with the backdoor flush draw and some backdoor straight possibilities. I think a white chip slid into the mix there for Doug. Did I see that right? Yeah. Full pot size bet, effectively. 8,200 out of Polk. I don't think we've seen that on the back end of a three bet. Not so far. This is a board, though, with a lot going on, right? Doug Polk could easily have a lot of hands with gut shots, straight draws, flush draws. So it does make sense, and Negranu makes the call. Complete blank on the turn. When you get called on that flop, Kane, what do you start to piece together about Daniel's range on that flop? Calling. Calling. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I cannot pay. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't pay. But I had something. All right, I think you know, I, th I think in Doug's head it was, so this guy's got a draw and I want him to let it go. And that five, seems what it, what it could have come down to. So when yeah. Daniel calls 10. that flop, I do think that Adding he still has a pretty wide range, right? He could have a pair of eights. He could have a pair of tens. He deeper could have an deeper. up and down straight draw like he did either with the jack nine or with a hand like jack queen, right? So Daniel's range is pretty wide there. Of course. I, like I assumed right now, we'd both be in for... And I think Polk know, shove was more of a function of the relative the, really, the stack size really relative to the size of the pot. It was about we'll a one point five set, stretch this uh, pot size bet where someone gets on the turn. Five times. Oh yeah, so I mean it happened to me. Happen. I mean I lost in an hour. I lost like six mines to a guy, and every one was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> like I can't. I look back at them all. I'm like, I didn't do anything wrong, right? No. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Well, yeah. it may be another case if you didn't do anything wrong here. As Daniel wakes up, pipped. Ace Jack out oh, of the big, three money. betting to four thousand against Ace Queen suited for Doug on the button. Oh, which about is how much you have fifty ish, right? I just fifty. Like way above 46 average. Forty-six plus ten more. Okay. Thirty-six, forty-six. Okay. Daniel did add ten thousand prior to the onset of this flop. pot, rather. Doug just calls and to the flop we go. Before calling a lead. Oh. oh, look at that flop. Top two against Ace Queen. Go on. Before calling, he did ask Daniel how deep he was playing. Could that be a little bit of a tell that Doug Polk has a strong hand and, and maybe was thinking of four bet getting it in? I certainly wonder when somebody does ask the question if it isn't because they've got something they're ready to sail away with. Daniel leads out for 1600. And Doug puts in the raise. This is exactly the script I think Daniel had in mind, by the way. You block a set of aces and a set of jacks. And the off chance that Doug chose to flat in position and slow play those holdings. So what's notable here is Doug's raise is, is pretty small, right? It's about a half pot size raise. Seven does bring nine ten in. Hand like nine ten of diamonds, not impossible for Doug to have here as far as holdings that would be disaster for the ace jack. But other than that, I can't think of much Daniel's worried about. Perhaps a set of eights? Yeah, Daniel's feeling really, really good here. And his check. Brings another bet out of Doug, 7,200 now. Big pot brewing here in hand 130. Such a wet board. Yeah, and what Daniel's thinking about right now is, should I just call and let my opponent continue to bluff, or should I go all in right here to prevent a card such as a 9 or a 10 coming that could give my opponent a straight? He does just call. Oh. oh, and there is a 10 on the river. Not a welcome sight. Four to a straight. King-queen gets there. Any nine gets it done. But 
Daniel's going to be asking himself how much of that stuff is in Doug's range. Ace is up. If he were that faced... Not a river card I was looking forward to, but... With I wasn't looking forward to hearing all A river bet, which he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, that was... to save me some money. Oh, you had something? Mm-hmm. That's something. Yeah, Lee, a lot of players would shove all in on that turn to prevent something like a, a, a 9 or a 10 uh, falling on that river and to get value. But so far with Daniel's overall game plan, we haven't really seen him take those aggressive lines when he has bluffs, when he has draws. So if he's trying to develop an entire game plan from the bottom up, he needs to be balanced, and it seems like he's taking he's taken a strategy of so being a little a more passive with both his strong right, hands exactly. and yeah. with some of the hands that you'd that routinely see a player bluff I with. Good point. And so the lead for Doug Polk yeah. was short-lived, though it extended quickly I mean, to over 13 k. Bomb the river. You have a pair. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you might. At some point, you probably slow down a little bit. I'm one of those people that's seen too many monsters under the bed to just flat the turn. But it is an excellent point that you make. You do have Very to be close, balanced. Right? I'm up to $4,000. You were ahead for two hands. I just flew too close to the sun. I was hoping. <laughs> a little too know, close to the sun. I was hoping it was a whitewash. Just. Icarus like, Polk. Like what, a landslide, as they said last yeah. night. Uh, at the skiing match. At the skiing match, of course. They do love those those landslides at the skiing match. It wasn't quite as much of one as we thought Relays. it would be for the match, but it was... Yeah. The hills didn't, yeah, well, there were more hills than I expected. I, I thought it would be a straight downhill it was not. slalom, but disappointed, actually. I wanted to see speed. I wanted it to be over early, like, in the, you know, when they were skiing in Florida. Like, I was hoping that Florida oh, would be the end of the race. Right. But yeah. they kept skiing, and they skied all the way to Nevada, and they skied everywhere. Yeah, no, it's... Now, I'm no... Uh, Cross-country, if you will. ...military-grade <laughs> code analyzer. <laughs> Cross-country skiing. But I suspect I know what they're talking about, Ken. <laughs> what was that? Your phone, your it was like a you? watch said, uh, was showing me a thing about Nevada, because I said Nevada. I think I oh. must have clicked it. I, I have Siri on my watch. I see. Is it 900? Yeah. yeah. Players were understandably instructed not to fly through certain zones mm. in their banter okay. this evening, as were we. And they've adhered to that thus far. So have we. Queen seven makes sevens and fives up against King High. Daniel check calls. Doesn't pick up a straight draw on the turn. to the turn bed. <coughs> this is going way faster than I expected. Yeah, same. It's been refreshing. Not well very much tanking. Sure. Hole 25. <laughs> the speed of play has been... <laughs> I'd play a few extra hands if you wanted to play some more. We'll see. I'm fine right. calling a session. Yeah. If I'm winning, you know. No. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> no, I, see. I, I see. don't know. No, I wonder if that fact, if you said there was a betting market on it, right? Oh, I didn't bet in the I session. Didn't. That would be. Yeah, a, I didn't either. I have, I have enough other I didn't things. bet. I mean, I had to bet because I got laid 10 to 1, so. Right. No, that's. I mean, it seemed pretty silly to not take that. It's actually kind of weird. We both bet with the same guy on ourselves to win. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just felt bad for people because if, like, you have incentive when there's 200 hands left, just Fair. fold out. Yeah. I had none, so like, I mean, I feel bad for the people betting on me. That I, I got gotcha. you. You know, yeah, I I'll, I'll, like let's say I had the match one with 300 hands to go, I could just I would just keep playing. Right. But for them, it's like, I'm no, no, I, torching for them. I, I I understand. So I felt like all right, I'll man up and or person up. Sorry, 2020. Um, Raise money. And uh, put some money down. 
It's interesting all the opinions on the match, like what the odds should be, who's gonna win, like a lot of a lot of experts on Twitter. Yeah, everyone knows. Hulk in the small blind here with ace eight offsuit facing a three bet. This is a hand you might see him mix in a four bet from time to time, Ali. That's you what's felt a it. Four bet for those at home. And this is what's called a fold of the mm. four bet. A lot of that has to do with but blocking we had to have one the ace. Right? I mean, that was amazing. Absolutely. That one. Well, actually, and it's not a strong enough it, hand to really comfortably games, call a three bet. Sure. You played online, that's what. You know, two tables, it's... Yeah, maybe it's hour. about right. Maybe it's about right. And now Polk again I was in scared the to four-bet because I just, you know, I knew that the old man routine, like, that was obviously kings, and then oh, I yeah, four-bet, and you, lay, you just laid it down. You I, said, I, that's I was, aces. I was splurging with jacks. <laughs> oh. It was getting wild. That's pretty wild. Big part of the reason we're here, Elite, Doug Polk has been very vocal about Daniel Negreanu in his treatment of pros in professional poker, but both of these players have done a lot to give back to the community. Polk, for his part, has said he's always stuck up for the players when they've gotten screwed, like with the Stars Supernova Elite thing. He's made videos trying to warn people of scams in the poker community, and of course, his, his website, Upswing Poker, helps players uh, improve their game and become better. Daniel Negreanu for his part, he sold a bunch Sweet. of action to his World Series of Poker in 2019 at no markup. And a lot of people made a lot of good money about that. In fact, his action sold out so fast that the site crashed. Yep. And he refunded everybody, right? They had the, there was a, a, a tens of thousands of dollars in processing fees. Daniel Negreanu went out of his own pocket, made everybody oh, whole. Make, dude, I'm going to make a ton of mistakes, obviously. Obviously. Ditto. Well, that was implied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doug yeah. made a straight there in that uh, last pot with like an 8-5. You're human. Like, you're going to make mistakes. It's just, that's like the... I just hope I don't misclick too much. Taking down the ace-9 suit. Have you misclicked much so far? A little bit here and there. With that table tamer thing, okay, yeah. a couple times, like, you know, you use it, like, a couple times you click on, I'm betting three quarters, then I click on the other table, and I come back and I bet one. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Like, yeah, it, it flips on you, so let's say it was 3.8, you know, big blind. And then, like, I go to the other table, and I come back, and it just flipped to one without. The blind, please. It's happened to me a couple times. Interesting. I don't know if it's happened to you or not. No, Notable no. that Doug four bet the ace eight and then folded the I mean, ace deuce right? to three bets there. So when you use the table tamer thing, it changes the, you know, puts the betting box. So you say, okay, three quarter. Okay. And then I go to the other betting box, and then... Somehow it reverts, like I click back and it reverts back to one. Maybe it's like, maybe it's pulling up their table somehow? Is that I don't, it flips the table, I don't know. It's some glitch or yeah. something. It's weird. It makes sense, Ali. You see solvers choosing to do that with the four bets. They'll four bet a hand like a seven or ace eight. It blocks uh, your opponent from having a hand like pocket eights or pocket sevens that may call a four bet. Pocket fours here on the queen nine three flop. Negrano's jack six of clubs unimproved. <coughs> Does have some backdoor potential. Interesting. This is the first time we've seen something like this out of Negrano. It is. 141 hands it took for him to check raise. There's some backdoor equity, but really nothing to speak of at the moment. And Polk will call. Ten of diamonds gives Negranu an open ender now. Third over card to the fours. And if Negranu can summon a turn bet here, I think it gets the job done. Indeed, snap fold from Doug in the case, face of the four check tank. raise. Yeah, that was my first one. <laughs> I was like, ooh, I yeah, get to do it some. The check and the raise. 
Well timed aggression the pays off for Negronio. We didn't actually specify we did not. that. We did not. Well, Twitter. you mean you brought coffee in and didn't sure. ask for And I guess now that I'm thinking about it, I started doing that first without, so I think it's fair. I had an idea that I was going to do that I just scraped, but I, I, I didn't print them out. Ah. But I was going if to, you, if you lost the big pot somehow, I was going to throw some charts your way. Oh, <laughs> you oh that would have been good. I missed out. That actually would have been a really solid noodle. If you stacked me, like, by the way, here you go. I've just like, been like, here, maybe you can just think. And it's like the charts, like the, the cards are high, just say like get better or something, yeah. like, like like learn to play or something. <laughs> check. Hulk defense is big. Check. Flops open ended. Both players check. And the nine of diamonds gives Polk the straight while it gives Negranu an open ender. The two players poking fun at the negotiations coming into the match. There was a lot of back and forth, Ali, about the use of pre-flop charts, yep. whether or not they should be allowed. It was very, very contentious uh, on, on Twitter. And finally, they decided that they're not going to use charts. But then at the end, Daniel said, you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm OK to go ahead and use charts. And the two players will be allowed to use charts online, but not real-time assistance. I certainly was against the idea of real-time assistance. I think that that transcends your capacities as a poker player and creates sort of a cyborg entity. And that's not what the match is designed to determine is who's got a better real-time assistant software. Board pairs and hearts come in. Nevertheless, Polk bets 3,000 at the river and Daniel easily folds the queen high. I, I don't know why, but in my head, like these hands would have been taking away longer. I think, yeah, I mean, when people take 30 seconds before the flop for each decision, they do. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess when you're just two people and you're playing reasonably fast, yeah, you can really churn through some hands. I think a lot of young guys or whatever, they, they overestimate how much they're giving away by just acting when they have a hand. It's like you're opening the button, big deal. Like, it's not yeah. like you need to think, hmm, should I, should I not? I'm like, I know what you're doing. Yeah, no, that, that stuff's like pretty unacceptable, I think. Yeah. I haven't had to deal with that in a long time because I didn't play, and then when yeah. I have come back, it's just been heads up, and like in heads up, no one's yeah. just like needlessly doing that, I don't think. Middle pair for Polk. Okay. Does not see that it. Okay. Still just king high for Daniel. Second check now draws the bet from Doug. And he will release. I played someone and they were tanking on the button up and be like, we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, They're just like tanking to open the button with whatever. It's just like some parts of the game, I think that if you're playing at a high level, like there's some things you just accept that both people understand somewhat of. <laughs> right. I mean, I get like standardizing stuff. Like mm -hmm. I think like when you're going to make like a bigger decision, I think take your time and like, sure. you know, make it like balanced so you can think if you want. But the mu the mundane like pre flop yeah. stuff that just like that's just ridiculous. Like if you if you check call the flop of king king three, and then the turn's a deuce and it's on you, you don't need to take thirty seconds to check the balance. Can you do that? I've seen that plenty, but well, not as much lately. But you know yeah. what I mean, like that's because that's really bad. A spot where you can just check dark, right, and then you yeah. just still spend thirty seconds. Yeah, that's that's a punt. Like what are you thinking about? You're never betting. Like you have a leading range here. Okay, cool. But. Doesn't Somewhere, like I guess Ferguson is and let, I'd be like, touche. <laughs> Shrugging yeah. his shoulders touché. and going, Didn't who, see me? that one coming. <laughs> it's one of the things Negranu is passionate about, the speed of play of being kings. slowed down a lot of kings over there. <laughs> by players the unnecessarily line. tanking. Queens, too. Okay, that one wasn't kings. Mm. I think he, he considers himself rightfully an ambassador to the much. game, Hall of Famer, yeah. Absolutely. on the Players yeah, Committee for the World game. Series. and. At the end of the day, he you recognizes the big picture of needing to grow the game and tanking and headphones and shades and hoodies and, you know, table demeanors that aren't welcoming are all bad for business. Yes. And that's why some people say that Negranu has an, a quote-unquote anti-pro stance. It's really a stance that this game revolves around amateurs, right? And, and amateurs need to be at the tables in order for the pros to show up, in order sure. for the games <laughs> to run. <laughs> Did he check? Uh, I checked. I checked, yeah. I checked. And if you create an environment, Ali, where the amateurs do don't want to come play, <laughs> okay. well, that's going to be bad for that poker. It's going to be bad for pros and amateurs alike. 
Yeah, if given the choice between cannibalism and seafood, I'll take fish all day. Grano lays down My the old time was, uh, You play Stud 8 or you know the game Stud 8, I know, right? I know. I know some... Yeah, yeah. When I, I know you played all the games. Yeah. yeah that's, why I, that's why I said like before when yeah, we were yeah. talking about the challenge, if you yeah. wanted to add, throw in a game, I would have been yeah. comfortable doing that. There was a guy named Anton Alleman. He was a World Series of Poker. He was a German guy. So Stud 8, he's the last person to bring it in, and he's an ace. So it's 100% raise. Right. He tanks 30 seconds, opens. Okay? I'll go play the hand. Seems necessary. Oh, yeah, I'm just getting started. Five dominated. Both players with a Broadway draw. Big advantage to Negreanu, who's flopped a king. An overbet from Doug Polkali. This is the first overbet we've seen in the match. The reason why I think we're seeing this is there are a lot of hands that Polk can have here that Negreanu simply can't have in this range. Top set of aces, top set of kings, top two pair, ace, king. All of those hands, Negranya would have three bet before the flop. Nevertheless, Daniel did call the 2200. Board pairs on the turn. Doug obviously needs to be cautious moving forward. You hate to be in that spot where you're trying to represent what your opponent has. That's certainly not the case here, as Negrano's holding is vulnerable. And so Doug <laughs> continues to tell so the story. So he opens the ace in the cutoff. The 30-second tank, ace. The three defends. The three catches an offsuit jack. He catches a suited four. So once again, he doesn't need to look this at his cards. 30-second right? yeah, tank. The guy calls. The guy with the three jack catches an offsuit queen. He catches an ace. So his board is ace, ace, four, two spades. He sits there for 30 seconds before betting. And then I asked him, I was like, what are you, why are you doing that? And he's like, oh, I, want to balance, I don't want to give off any tells. I said, your fucking board is a tell. Like, your board is... Ace, ace, four with yeah, two that's suit. Like, that's a weird thing because in that spot, like, you don't have a tell if you just immediately bet. You don't even need to look at your whole cards. Like, that's a spot where you could literally never look. Yeah. It's just already played. Your, like, your range advantage is just... Like, a lot of Raz, Raz spots are like that, where you just, this guy bets, this guy checks. It's simple. Yeah. There's no... That was a yeah, great that's tough, that's tough last hand by, by Doug Lee with the 10 5. Yeah. And the reason why his turn bet was, was I, I so good there too, like, is I, I, after the flop over bet, guy, I, I he no could idea. reasonably I expect why, Daniel to I, I fold a like lot of his weaker jacks when, when, you, when, you're when an facing an over bet. So when the wide, jack comes in on the turn, right, it's unlikely that Daniel Negreanu has trip jacks. And he's in a really, really difficult spot if he has a pair of even a pair of aces, two pair of aces and jacks with a king kicker. That one was extreme. Well executed by Polk there as he moved the best hand off the pot. Daniel flops a five as the C-bet sizing is restored to normal. 600 from Polk gets called. Third heart and an ace on the turn. Polk picking up the nut flush draw to go with king high. Daniel checks again. Doug following up with a 2K bet now. And again, Daniel releases the winner, at least on that street. Online ring games are, are kind of like that. Like, people know that they need to like balance their timing, so they just take more rather than less. Just like, can really slow the game down. Yeah, that's bad for people who just want to play for fun. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like when I when I play heads up, like if I'm playing like smaller stakes for someone that's obviously more playing for fun, then like I'm gonna play like pretty quick and like you know like make some decisions fast and keep keep the game fun. But if you're playing someone that's like really good, then you know or you're yeah. playing like a really high, like high stakes like Check. match or whatever. Check. It's more important just to play your game and play well. Trip jacks for Daniel, lying in wait. Make that quad jacks. Wow. More of the same out of Daniel and Grani who are checking back strong on the flop, checking back even stronger on the turn. 
And he hits pause on the river. Yeah, the real it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, that is it. Yeah, that is it. Polk. Forced to pay off with the five, really. I'm really starting to get suspicious here, Ali. I wonder if Daniel's just trying to throw Doug off for the whole rest of the it. match, or if it's part of his strategy to just really check so many turns. I didn't have anything I wanted to I mean, fancy. specifically yeah, on the turn street, creative. Daniel has yeah, been so least, passive, I tried to five both as the get. better, yeah, that's right? right? And when facing fairly. aggression with hands that yeah, you have nothing. normally would see a player check raise. In and out of position, it certainly feels like there's been some sort of blueprint, and you wonder just how much he and his coaches mind Doug's play to sort of determine whether or not that was an approach that would be profitable. Meanwhile, Jack-10 turns into top pair with backdoor hearts against queen-6. A C-bet takes hmm. it. Well, the trends that have emerged here across the first three quarters of 200 hands, and I think have been well established thus far, one wonders how much they will continue into the online arena, whether or not this is horticulture, planting seeds, and then maybe seeking to deviate once the online arena unfolds. Yeah. Only time will tell. I was going to do a four bet that time. Well, you're going to need a three bet to get there. I had big <laughs> pair, big pair. Nice. Didn't catch the second card, but Daniel suggesting he had jacks. Have you heard any whispers as to just how many total hours of play it's suspected would be required to reach 25,000 hands in predominantly the online arena to tabling? I haven't. A lot of people are saying uh, that the entire thing may take two to five weeks. The players have committed to play four days a week minimum, Kay. and they've committed to playing uh, two-hour sessions with the ability, of, if both players agree at the end of those two hours, to extend for an hour at a time. Mm. And if you're just tuning in and you're wondering, you know, how did we get here, right? Why is there a, a high stakes heads up feud between these two players? It's because for years, Daniel Negreanu and Doug Polk have been going at one another. Or, or uh, more accurately, Doug Polk has been going at Daniel Negreanu. Right. And Negreanu more or less has kind of not gone after our Polk as much until recently. And finally, they said enough's enough throw down the gauntlet, bring it to the felt. And we're talking about things, Ali, like on Doug Polk's YouTube channel, making uh, videos about Daniel Negreanu not being a great ambassador for the game, maybe being disingenuous. One of the main criticisms that Polk has levied against Negreanu is that maybe he's a little bit fake. Yeah, the old man, I have two pair with a jack kicker. Well, <laughs> speaking of fake, <laughs> old man speed. That, that 1300 was less than authentic out of I, I, I Daniel. Got through. Mm. And Daniel Negreanu is uh, saying, you know, Doug Polk has like made a living like speed by, uh, by uh, tarnishing uh, my name. Right. He, so he, he makes a living out. drawing people to upswing poker by making negative videos about great. me. Got but speed. now the two players are at the table in front of one another, and you'd think they've well, been best friends check. forever. Yeah. That was the other one. A far different tone to their exchanges than there had been. With a better part Perkins of got to be loving years. watching this right now, by the yeah. way. He's got to just be loving life. I'm sure he's got the popcorn out. Oh, for sure. Check. 8 6 turns into an open ender for Daniel. And again, we see passive play with a wide range of holdings. A C bet there in all likelihood. Could get through pretty easily. Doug with just two overs and no club. Instead, the board pairs on the turn. Yeah, we've seen Daniel check back a lot of relatively strong draws on the flop earlier in the match. He checked back King Queen on a Jack Nine export. Not a card above a seven. Straight's possible. Clubs come in. But the fact that Daniel right, has taken these sorts of lines. All right. Old with his stronger holdings, speed. means nice. that he can get away with the eight high in this spot. To be fair, it's a little tough to 
sometimes call with you queen just gotta 10 lay it down, you know? Sometimes you gotta lay it on the best hand. Sometimes you gotta lay it down. Three, not enough kit for Doug. Well, poker after dark is coming back, friends. A whole new season's worth of it. 52 all new episodes featuring today's biggest poker stars and celebrities is going to be headed your way December 13th exclusively on Poker Go. Set your calendars for the premiere of Poker After Dark season 12. I kind of want to get out there and throw on those comically large boxing gloves with the study watching to do the rest of the show with those on NBC heads up. Are you a boxer? <laughs> oh, I was tweeting that. No. People were asking, well, what are you doing to say? Well, <laughs> yeah. today we're focusing on the NBC heads up from 2005 because Mattisau. Oh, That's Matt. Shulman. Yeah, I got a lot of messages. People like, dude, you realize Mattisau was coaching him? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, that's not what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was so obvious. I just, I'm surprised anyone was sort of. I, I, you'd think that, but yeah. the thing is, the number of people that decided I need to know that Massa was coaching you was like. They thought that that was important for you to know. They were like, dude, you might really need this information. Yeah. <laughs> Two fours and a five on the flop. Swing and a miss in both seats. Texture favoring ace nine. One bet gets it done. Shout out to Josh Arie, by the way, who shot a text over, letting us know he's streaming us live at home in greater Atlanta area. Did you see the mass out tweet where he was like, oh yeah, you did, you had a great response to that. You, the, the meme from um, the office. Oh, where it went? Yeah, that was Where amazing. he bet his whole bankroll? so funny, yeah. He was trolling, but I mean, most people believed it. No, he sent me, he said he's learning how to troll from Matt Glantz. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, that's. I to say it's nice to know the, the, that the guys who played so much poker like throughout their careers kind of, and certainly like, watched I playing as well. I'm paying ten k on, on Daniel, this sort of stuff. but I'm leaving to for the bills and I'm the, and like bank someone. Well, Trump. he did a good job then. Yeah, with his troll tweet. Polk taking a hand we wouldn't normally see players play on their button, raising it up and taking it down because Negranu has a good blackjack hand, but not a good poker hand. You know what's interesting? I, I think we're at zero percent limps on the button, and I'm when really you look at the way Helmuth played against like Antonio, like it was the, the complete opposite. He yeah, just wanted to while. limp I mean, they started, almost every button, no matter what he had. Right, now they were yeah. playing a, a sit-and-go format, sure. right? Sure. So as you get more shallow, it actually makes sense to begin developing a, a wide limping range. This deep, however, um, the game theory optimal solution to pre-flop play on your button Jason would buy be to either raise to or fold. Uh, retract his tweet originally. Good. Because I said something about, I mean, in the beginning I was offering, would you want to try different formats? Yeah. He's tweeted, like, obviously backtracking, not going to play. No, no. And I was I, like, that's not what I was take doing. Take it there I'm for Doug. Exploring options. I think, I think like, my crew, I mean, I, I think just in general, I think people have a lot of respect that you decided to do this. Like, I know that I, I definitely have respect for, like, you being willing to play this format because, like, it's going to be competitive. Or it's going to so. be, it's going to be, well, you know what I mean. Like, it's a, yeah. it's a tough format. Like, if you're not good, like, it's going to be, it's going to be very expensive. So it's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too much of a Rocky fan. Check. <laughs> Daniel alluding to the fact that he is the underdog story here, but nevertheless stepped up to the plate. His 5-6 is a gut shot straight draw here, and courtesy of the queen, as is Polk's king-10. Still no betting in either seat, and the three slides in nicely, giving Daniel the nuts. Mm, let me think about that. 
King High getting curious here, especially given that Doug has caught Daniel speeding, as they card. described it on a few occasions. Might this be another? It's kind of nice. Hoping you had a five. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't in the right area code. <laughs> should win. It's it, yeah. Should should. Better we need a new deck. What would I even have? Three cards. Five, six, seven. Yeah. They what? A light oopsie there from Doug, who was just talking about how much respect he had for Daniel and his willingness to accept this challenge in that format, and apparently he took to the Twitter sphere to share some of those sentiments. Talking about how impressed he was that Daniel stepped up to the plate, taking the worst of it. Very complex game for a lot of money. That's not lost on Daniel. But the fact that he's willing to put it on the line, drawing respect. And there it is, Doug Truck Driver Polk. <laughs> Gotta love that new avatar. And, uh, you know, from that, throughout this entire match, we're seeing a completely How different take from like Polk. I mean, these guys, you'd think on. that they've been wait. best like, friends forever. Back, you'd have no idea none. Yeah. that no urgency for me uh, Doug that? Polk has yeah, been no, just sense. trashing and bashing I Daniel really play live over the previous like weeks. Before. I, you, know, you, didn't I wasn't, play, you didn't play live? I didn't. Oh. I mean, not, not cash. I, okay. I never, like, I wasn't going to the Bellagio to play. I was playing tournaments at the Rio. And then occasionally, you know, events across the world or whatever. But to be fair, it's a two-piece meal that required so Daniel exhibiting Here's some maturity and a lack of ego. You gotta get the plug in. <laughs> yeah, gotta do it. He's got five, six again here, and again, a gut shot straight draw. He's up against a pair of nines, however. Running diamonds. Hit the board. Nothing. Beat the nothing. It's nuts. And that one ends uneventfully. I wasn't sure if I had a diamond, had to double check, and I saw the bad news. Never have to do that online. No. Never have to double check. You know. No. And a lot of people have asked Ali, you know, why would Daniel accept this challenge? knowing that he's an underdog, right? Daniel says he's an underdog. Doug Polk says he's an underdog. The betting odds yeah. have him as a massive underdog. And, you know, Daniel's response to that that he said in his blog is, it's actually a quote, the credit belongs to the man who, at the best, knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who, at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory or defeat. Boy, that was deep. Here's a tale of the tape. Not quite as deep as what you just rattled through, but certainly some numerical analysis. Doug Polk not really aspiring to ascend to the top of the all-time money list. 101st, nevertheless. Popularity rankings, a little disparate. YouTube subs. Daniel trumping Doug in his own arena there. and I like the vehicle choice. <laughs> The Brink truck. It's, it's, the Brink, yeah, we have to elaborate. Not really just truck, Brink's truck. Poker, but it wasn't, it wasn't feasible. I didn't like the idea. Well, I, I thought that there was a way, but I ultimately. You can see why it's kind of weird though, right? Like yeah, well, weird. yeah, because the regulations. I thought, yeah, yeah. Daniel had the Model S. Did he change to the Model X? I thought Amanda had the Model and X and he still had. Leaving for three months. The D-Negs Tesla. Who you knows? were at the wedding, not me. So. Yeah. That's, I don't have an answer for you. Well, it used to be. You just knew whenever there was a Golden Knights game, I just feel you'd like see his it, car it, like, down had, at like, the Aria Valet. Things could get, Everybody drives know, there, just, parks, walks over, like mm. right. avoid the traffic. Well, but, uh, it seems like it should to be. be fair to, that Doug with that, to be fair to totally Doug with that legal, graphic, totally Daniel do. does have more YouTube there's, subscribers, there's like but Nevada Doug's videos get a ton of views. like circumventing the regulations. Millions of views. I think. We never could get a legal opinion, really. And more of the dusty side of the spectrum going to work for Doug. But this time he runs into a three bet. Immediately regretting it. Yeah. You can see him grimace. I think it's also kind of hard because it's like hard to know exactly the risk, you know? Yeah, like long term. Or what yeah, like what are after all. The f after the fact. What are all the things that could happen? Yeah. Is it, isn't it illegal to bet on the U.S. election? 
I I don't think it's illegal to bet. It it's is in the U.S., to, like, right? Book make. I thought it was illegal. I mean, see everyone doing it yeah. with yes. like a book. I mean, yes. oh, you're not going to walk into Caesars and find a line. I think if you're American, <laughs> well, that's what I thought. I thought if you're American, the, you're not allowed. The clear answer is it is illegal for the, the book ski, to the offer yes. Yes. their the services skiing, yeah. to people in the United States. States. Yes. yes. Not a lot of places you're going to feel comfortable about the dealer reaching below the table to bring a deck onto the table to then <laughs> deal you a high stakes heads up hand. But our, our studio is one of the few where you can take comfort in that it's on the square. You see that at a home game? You may want to think twice. No pair anywhere on the King-10 tray board. Check, check. Now a gut shot straight draw for the 5-6. Courtesy of the deuce, wheel draw for Negranu in the best hand with ace four. Facing a $1,200 bet. He makes the call. Queen on the river. And either Doug waves the white flag or gets after it with just 4,200 in there. He opts for. The former. That's what I get for giving up. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, a four would have been really bad for you. I'm gonna make a pair. Oh shit! No, you didn't have ace five. No, I had ace four. Oh, yeah, you had I the. Bet. Sorry, you I had, had six five. I, I had six the. the I bet. Yeah. This is how straights work. Pairs aren't straights. <laughs> Who knew? I play high stakes for. <laughs> or I guess I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> sort of. Maybe each of them should have to wear a glove. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. And That's then if you nice want to you. move all in, you simply <laughs> pound the rail with the glove. At least somebody believes me. With the way that this match has been going, I don't think we're going to see too many all-ins. That's Lee true. has been playing a little more on the passive side. I mean, what's the most that either player has been up so far? Is 31 and change, I think, for Daniel is what I recall being the high water mark for us. So player. not even a buy-in. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Three Negronio bet situation. Yeah, Negranio did mention that part of the reason he accepted this match. He's too big of a Rocky fan. His dogs are named Rocky and Apollo. That's true. Yeah. You think he loves Rocky more than Apollo? <laughs> they are watching at home with Amanda Leatherman, his wife. And look at this. We have a four bet from Kid Poker. 9,600 total, but we've also got a lot of hand for Doug Polk here in this ace queen. Now is it five bettable? Behind. I'm really bad with chips. Mm -hmm. well, there's 20, so 20, at 100 40. big blinds deep, oh, yes. Okay, cool. But Thanks. these players are a little bit deeper than 100, and that does play in here. What also might play in is Doug Polk thinking that Negranu is on the tighter side, and that's why we're seeing him just make the call instead of go all in. Now, certainly, Daniel would have preferred the fold right then and there. The fact that Doug has called does tip his hand somewhat. Now both players... Flopping gut shot straight draws on the Jack-10 tray board. Doug, quick check. Over to Daniel with 19-2 in the middle. 4, and he slides 4,000 out there. Call. Doug calls the 4K. Six on the turn, and you think Daniel's starting to piece together some of that ace-king, ace-queen for Doug? I don't think he's putting ace-king in Doug's range. Because we he would see have the five bet there? Yeah, okay. I think he, we would have expected an all-in preflop. He also blocks the king, of course. So we start to consider ace-queen as a very real possibility in this spot. It is a little bit of a scary board for Daniel because I imagine that Polk would play pocket jacks and pocket tens this way as well. Wow, and you see Polk again making the call. This could be the biggest pot we've seen thus far and a very dry run out. Does Kid Polker have a final bullet in him? And is it a given that that bullet gets it done? Might depend on the caliber. I'm all in. All in. Wow. 
<sighs> that is not what Doug wanted to hear. It's 31. And well Old done, Daniel again. Negranu. Oh, no. <laughs> Negranu <laughs> takes it down. Old man speeding. And hate confesses <laughs> immediately. Yeah, hate to hear it. And that tells Doug Tell he folded the winner. Tell me not that on any freaking street. I believe it. If he you would have been very disappointed. He's going to see that hand and think, oh, never mind. If you were I'm, speeding, I'm I believe sides. it. I'm going to switch sides. <laughs> it certainly starts to look a lot like two kings, though, in, if you're in Doug's chair. Doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a nearly impossible call with ace queen high there. That's why it's a great play by Daniel. I mean, he, you know, he put in the four bet. He had a gut shot. So he had some equity on both the <laughs> flop and the turn. And then on the river, he has no, no hope, no prayer to win the pot. Great play by Kid Poker. You even put a jack in jail a little bit on the river there. Yeah, it becomes a, you know, it becomes a, a bluff catcher type of hand, but a hand that you would expect for Doug to call with because, of course, he is blocking two pairs. He's blocking top set, and it's just too strong of a hand to fold in, in the heads-up format. But yes, to your point, somebody could find a hero fold with top pair in that spot. Meanwhile, we pick up the action where Negranu flopped an ace, and it turns into aces and sevens on the river. The turn card wasn't a bad one for Doug as he picked up the lone heart draw. But instead, he's left with just one pair of eights here on the end. Something that, that is a little bit notable about that hand and something that if I were in Doug Polk's camp, I'd be taking note of is we've seen a number of hands where Daniel Negreanu has just kind of had like the stone nuts type of hand on the turn and quickly checked back. So when Daniel Negreanu does go bet, bet, shove, right? It mighty, it mighty just be checking his strong hands on the turn. Right. That turn play in particular, I think, is going to get zeroed in on as a pattern that emerged with intent. Long-awaited return of high-stakes poker is around the corner. Gather around the hearth, December 16th. We bring you 26 all-new episodes featuring fan favorites and some newcomers, along with Poker Legends. It all happens exclusively right here on Poker Go. I wonder if we got permission to fly our drone wow. above the strip <laughs> like that. Right. Do we need a flight right, plan to dinner. get filed? Or <laughs> the wife. You think we bought we that footage? Speeding. Yeah. That's good. I think people's attention span, too, is not necessarily like seven hours or something like this. Yeah, that's fair. No. Queen nine buckles under the pocket sevens three bet. As Negranu has a seventeen thousand dollar lead. One hundred and seventy two hands in the books. Jack eight rainbow. Okay. Middle pair for Polk out flopping the A7. Now trips for Doug. Check. Check. Twelve hundred. Mm. So before we started, Brent, I heard him doing the practice thing for the end of the match. And I hear <laughs> So, Doug, it was an absolute bloodbath. You destroyed him. Were you surprised? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm listening to this. Dude. What the hell? Like, I'm right here. Hell? I'm like, I'm standing right here. What is this? Really? And I said to him, I said, I hope you did another take <laughs> with a different Well, engine. they did a Daniel one earlier. Okay, good. I mean, putting that out in the universe. Jeez. <laughs> did you expect it to be this easy? He says. Well, I think Doug wow. just made Brent's Christmas list. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel with the dominant nine on an ace high board. C bet and take it. Did you expect it to be this easy? Yeah. yeah. What went wrong, Daniel? <laughs> like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Great easy, mindset right? to jump in there and you know? Yeah. That's what I'm sitting here listening to this. And this is, you better have another take. It's a funny story. <laughs> 
It is neither the first nor the last time that Buffalo Brent Hanks will find himself dining on his own hoof. <laughs> 4, King Jack, three betting the ace 10 suited from Doug. I don't know about you, Ali, but when I'm playing heads up, no limit, and I, it's my button and I get three bet and I have the ace 10 suited, uh, I'm excited. Well, how about when the jack 9 8 rolls off and you're open ended with backdoor diamonds prospects? I'm even more excited, and this is why I love calling three bets with hands like ace 10 suited. So many good things can happen. Well, for Daniel, the good thing for him is he has top pair, but has chosen to bet just 1,600 into the 8K. We've seen that sort of downsizing post-flop from the three better. Yeah, that's been a standard sizing. Nice clean turn for King Jack. Check. Pumps the brakes. A lot of players would continue to fire this turn Ali with uh, King Jack, but with the way Daniel's been playing, I'm not surprised to see the check. Well, how about the bet from Doug? 7,600 into 11-2. Surprising? No. I, I think this absolutely makes sense for Doug. He's looking to get folds out of hands like Ace-King, maybe hand like Ace-Queen that played a little passively on the turn. Well, there's a whole lot of comfort associated with that river card for Daniel, just in case he was up against one of those over pairs. Didn't feel like that was in play, but you never know. And as I was just saying, Ali, when I have ace-10 on the button and somebody three bets, I feel awful about that situation. <laughs> well, Daniel did not fire the river. And Doug did not get after it. So fire river probably works, right? Well, I was thinking, like, actually, before you, I was like, oh, this is a cooler, because I had a feeling you're just going to bet 30000 and I was going to give the speech about the cooler and how can I fold this and blah, 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 and then call. Oh, that would be brutal. <laughs> that would just be brutal if I was bluffing. <laughs> like, another cooler. I know I'm going to get stacked yes. here. I'm just like, the no. As soon as you hear the, the word cooler, you're like, oops. No, I don't want that anymore. <laughs> Late stage rally from Daniel finds him up almost 30,000 in the neighborhood of his biggest side. lead all match long. Most I have. And who do you think is the most happy about and that between three, Daniel, I'm Phil good. Helmuth, Mike Matisau, and Bill Perkins? Something. I'm going to go with yeah, Matisau just because while he doesn't have the most money on the outcome, the again, net worth like quotient, quotient as I understand it, that he has bet on Daniel I at 4-1 to one got 50 is 50 percent. You think he's glued in. 20K of his 40K bankroll allegedly bet on Daniel at 4-1 to one to win the match. We see 8-6 suited, three betting this time. Right on the heels of King Jack turning over on its back in the three bet range, we see a deviation from that. It turns into a spade draw on the ace-king-5 board. Ooh, nice. that's, that's, a, that's a good flop for the three better with eight six of spades. You got the spade draw, you got some backdoor straight possibilities, and that's just a good board for your range. And this is a carbon copy as far as sizing is concerned to the king jackpot. Yeah, and that's the only reason we're seeing Polk here. A call with pocket deuces on this board is not at all standard, but facing a less than one-fourth pot size bet he chooses to make the call with the backdoor wheel draw. Yeah, he kept his miner's hat on, but unfortunately, no sets in this ore. Check. McGraw has picked up a pair of sixes. A lot of hand here. There's a lot of upside if it's beaten. 7, I like this bet by Negranu. Um, this was a good board to continue to basically semi-bluff, try to fold out hands that Polk could have, such as hand. pocket tens, pocket nines, maybe even a hand like king jack. Hands that might not have been four betting, it's nice having but good would hands. certainly be oh, in so his range easier. and capable of so laying down as better easier. holdings to the pair of sixes. And now, certainly the holdings have something to do with it, but the three betting frequency has gone up considerably. King eight's going to hang in there. 
Seeing some big pots brewing near the tail end of this, Uli. Yep. Three, four, five. Wheel draw with the two overs for Polk. Check. Polk does check. This is a board we see the preflop three better check often, simply because at the top of the ranges that these players can possibly have, it really favors Negranyu. Negranyu more likely to have hands like okay. sets on this board or straights. Doug goes for the check call against a small size, and Negranyu hits a favorable turn. Binky. Eight of diamonds to put him in front. And we see him continuing to play tricky trappy on the turn. Check. Backdoor diamonds come in. Yeah, I like this check by Doug. I, I think I'm supposed I, to bet, but I'm going to be a chicken. Oh, nice check. I can beat it. You want you know, to see the I bet on the river? I don't know what Doug is thinking there, but I you think what Doug is thinking there. is please bet so I can shove. Yeah, <laughs> with the ace of diamonds. Yeah. You had the jack of diamonds? There's always a chance. I think I had the ace of diamonds. Oh, okay. I thought it was a jack, but maybe, maybe, either way. Maybe, I, had a diamond. I thought it was the jack of diamonds. I had a diamond of spade. Well, I'm going to add 10. I think I'm at 40-ish. I am positive this is a high water mark for Daniel now, up over $40,000, close to one buy-in. Doug has reloaded 30k by my count. By the and way, the, Daniel 10. the process of trying to get money on WSOP. Yeah. Did, were you able to do it? I, I, I was able to do it, but like, I mean, obviously you're, you're pretty limited in like what you're allowed to deposit and stuff. Pretty cool that they made the made it work for us, though. Yeah. I don't the even idea know. of going down there 10 times in a, ten times in a row just to do that. Yeah. Like that was not appealing to me. I don't understand why they can't just let us deposit. 750? Yeah. Daniel defended the big, flops the club draw. Check call 750. Does not improve on the turn. 7 high, feeling sheepish. Wow, Daniel, having missed on the river, picking a good time to barrel away. It's Little like, did he know, nine hundred. Hey, let me good. put money on the site. No, no, no. Let's 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 just slow down a sec. Are you sure you want to do that? I always feel bad because it's not it's not their fault. I know, I know, the, it's I know it's regulation. It's all politicians who don't know. Yeah. They're just doing the best. Like you know what it was like when they first came to Nevada, the first site that was legal here. They literally wanted paper, paper copies of every single transaction. You know what transaction means? Every five cent bet or twenty cent bet, oh, that's they wanted. Unreal. So you're talking about a room full of paper every week. That was when Ultimate was was doing it. Ultimate uh, poker. Stop. Terrence was working with them. Stop. I remember he told me that. I'm like, yeah. you're talking about. It didn't make any sense. That's not very logical. I will say this about Negranu's playstyle. Even though he's been pretty Check. passive on the turn, I can't remember a river that he's just checked down with a hand that basically can't win. So he's been pretty willing to stab the river. In position? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the problem with gaming is a lot of the decisions that are made don't like reflect well, like, not what well makes thought sense. Out. Yeah. Like I remember in Toronto, I used to play Limit Hold'em. And it was, you know, it was legal or whatever. Then they took it to the regulator and because we didn't know what straddles. And, and they asked, like he said, are straddles legal? And he said, what's a straddle? We explained it to him. He didn't understand it. He looked confused. He goes, yeah, no, no, no. They're not legal. <laughs> like, you have, you're just guessing. It, it would be like, it's like with the court case with uh, Apostle. Like, what could a jury really look at and, like, understand about that, you know? I mean, but that's what I always thought about with that case. Like, if you get 100 experts in a field, and all the experts are unanimously agreeing with something, like in any other field, wouldn't that hold weight, you know? That's like, a good point, yeah, I'm, I would think so. So let's just take the take 100 people that are considered experts, and if they all come up to the same opinion, how can that be considered, you know, wrong? I mean, it could be, but no, it isn't. <laughs> I, think, I think, like, the problem is when it's poker, people don't view, like, professionals as experts. Right. I, they started to use Fedor as an example. Well, this guy did a lot of things people didn't think were possible. <laughs> 
Are you talking about? I found my Fader Holtz, not okay, the other okay, one. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Just checking. Yeah. Broadway draw for King High on the Ace Queen Jack board. Fifteen hundred. And certainly the momentum appears squarely. That other guy was also Daniel's doing things we didn't think were possible, but I played him in the heads they up. Weren't possible. What's really funny is I played him in the heads up uh, on the GG uh, on the thing, and I thought he was easy. I, like I played him first round, and I crushed him. Not and like he was I, making a lot of I'm fun. I'm not liking of me. my chances. Apparently I'm not he said, my chances "Wait." Over here. Apparently he said, "Doug Polk is going to smash him. I want to bet everything I have on Doug." Wait, really? He was, he was so mad. Yeah, because I saw someone sent me the video after. Oh. Because he was streaming it. I see. And he says, I'll bet everything I had. I think because he's, I checked the hand, I wasn't supposed to. Battle that, of the you know, suited deuces. So that, and that's it. The inferior one turns into aces up. Yeah, usually betting everything you have is like a not great strat. I would usually go for just some of what you have. 450 is that? Yeah, 450. It's good bankroll management. Oh, yeah. Both hands pick up wheel draws, but Polk's includes a six. I need 1,800. I need 100. 5x, 5-3, five, 5-deuce five type stuff. He goes for the over bet, Ali. This, this, one, this one smells 500. fishy, but I don't have a hand I can call with. But it smells fishy, yeah. All I'm saying is I'm glad we're moving to online after this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're moving it on that to online. That one smelled really fishy, but it would have been a stretch for me to call there. All right. I had a four. You got me off of the big okay. old four. That's, that's fine, yeah. I should have just yoloed it. You yoloed it. It would have been a, it would have been one hell of a, the start to the challenge. <laughs> just like, yeah, that seems like a great bluff. He just yolos it off with a <laughs> pair of fours because he has a feeling. Old school feeling. There's still some guys that that will like step outside and do stuff like that. But oh yeah, it's more it's a little more rare now online. But there, there guys. I tell you what, though, if I had an ace, I would have called you. Oh wow! Just so you know. <laughs> Shocking. You ain't gonna run me over. And then you're gonna re-raise the kings right. next. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not afraid. I'll re-raise you here. Let's go. Oh. Well, this happened once before. Daniel in the big blind with an ace jack up against an ace queen, and he flopped top two. Let's see how it plays out this time as Polk elects to flat. <laughs> re-raise you here. Got the speech. So I'm going to miss in both seats on the nine high flop. Daniel does Check. have backdoor nut hearts. Check. And he picks up a magical turn card. What a turn card if you're Daniel Negreanu. Top pair, top kicker with the nut flush draw. But he just continues to check. I think Daniel's advisors told him not to show any aggression oh. on the turn. Look at this brutal run out for Doug. Yes. After Daniel checks the turn, Doug checking back with the gut shot straight draw on ace queen. And when the ace rolls off, he's got to assume that more often than not, this hand is going to be good at showdown. Will he be facing a bet? Indeed he will. Six and that bet isn't oh, paltry. Jack. 6K gets snap called. And we'll walk down memory lane. Doug immediately eluding. To that being the second time that his ace queen has been downed by an ace jack. As Negranu vaults over 50k, okay, a full buy in in, in the lead, more? just 14 okay, hands away from the yep. finish. We finally reached that benchmark. And Negranu has been in the lead for what, 95% of this sure. heads up match so far? 15, 
Certainly not what anybody would have thought 40, coming yeah, in. Crazy. If I tell you that in. the exact same like hands were to be dealt out and the would yeah. be in Polk's seat and Polk would be in Daniel's, do you and, uh, foresee an outcome that would be all too different? No, no huge pots. Or was this predominantly a function of holdings? I, I didn't do. I think a lot didn't of it was mine. a function of holdings. However, what I will say is I think that Polk certainly would have played that king nine differently, where right. Negrano won that huge pot with the four bet and the triple barrel bluff. Sure. Might have been some significant deviation there. Sure. Meanwhile, we see Negrano open ended, not putting any additional chips into the pot up against this middle pair on the flop. Might have an old man speeding situation again. As Doug checked three streets old man and speed. sniffed it out. <laughs> <laughs> old man speeding. Take A lot of speeding today. I don't know about yeah, this. Yeah, you know. I like to drive fast. Yeah. I, had a pretty I didn't think I'd win if I checked. That's probably true. But you also didn't win if you bet. You bet. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> Do you think, Ali, that the two hundred, the first two hundred hands being in a live poker setting rather than an online setting, that that's helped Daniel. I think so. I think Doug concedes that he has far less seat time in this capacity, and I think Daniel, obviously, just being longer in the tooth career-wise, has had more opportunity to sort of hone his craft while looking across the felt at someone and and just having that sort of intuition that you can't really make up, as you see the dummy end of the straight on this particular board hit on the turn by 7-8 and could end up getting paid off here as Polk flop top pair. Yeah, we're going to see Polk go for a value bet here on Daniel. Straight. Just call with the winning hand. I didn't even know I had it when I checked the turn. I was like, it looked like a goofy Because one. you check every turn. It's a goofy one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually though. check my hand yeah. on the turn, yeah. meaning look back at it. I, I check it, then I check it. Not that I would have bet. I'm not saying that. Just... A little thin value. Yeah. Got a little, little value bet in. Both of these players playing very, very well, though. I mean, Doug Polk playing similarly to what I would have expected. I guess the major deviations that Polk has made from uh, Game Theory Optimal would actually be he's opening many more buttons, right? We've seen him here even with the 7-4, for example. Which um, turns into two pair on this turn, by the way, yeah. up against an open ender and a flush draw, which could get exciting. We've also seen uh, Doug Polk do a couple of out-of-the-box things, like in that first hand. You know, Doug Polk even said after the hand, that was an exploit, where he uh, turned ace four into a bluff against Daniel's pair of kings that Daniel had checked down. Doug just calls the turn bet of 1,400 now. Daniel makes tens and fours, but there are four cards to a straight on the board, so he elects to Hands check. Up. Doug checks back and yes. decent hand. Oh, been snake yeah. bit here in the last ten or so also hands. Oh wow! Yeah, the cards are really just falling Daniel's way, but Daniel, for his part, ten. playing very well. You know, coming up with a couple of creative bluffs. We of course talked about that king nine. And also, in general, Such Daniel's been playing real goes. tough on the river. When Daniel's had nothing or when he's had something big, he's been willing to bet. Balance is certainly the key in these confrontations, especially when there's going to be enough data to be mined to be able to pick out any patterns. How many hands, how many hands are left? How many? Like, huh? Oh, okay. You lock up the wind, just fold out. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll Perky would be really upset. You want to just, <laughs> just lock it up? Would it be fair to call anybody endeavoring to play twenty-five thousand hands in the manner that these two are, without any sort of team behind them, 
just reckless and irresponsible? Well, I'm not sure if, if Polk really had a, a team behind him over if, if it was more software that was his team. Which has obviously been negotiated out of the affair. Right, well... With the exception of the charts. Off the felt, right, the players can use whatever study tools they want right. in between sessions. And that's Boy, what no I think Polk stacked. has been using oh, so, I thought, for least, these past I mean, three I guess months. Hands isn't as much as um, he's been training I guess at this point daily, no one from what I hear from <laughs> you know Ryan Fee and other people Probably who are very close to Doug Polk. He's taken this very, very seriously, and uh, he's used software to certainly inform his play. Whereas Daniel, I think, has been using a combination of software and live humans. <laughs> He's going to be using King oh, 3 wow. suited to go to work on this A7 suited, which 3-bet pre. And remember, the last time that Daniel 4-bet, it was basically acknowledged that he had nothing on that Jack-10 high board against the Ace-Queen. Ali, in this spot here, A7 suited is a good hand to call with. It's also a good hand to shove with. Um, Doug Polk does elect to call. Folding would be considered too tight. Awful texture for Doug here. Jack 9-4. He does have one diamond. Check. Daniel checking back. Board pairs on the turn, and that's going to be a welcome sight for Doug, though it's not a given his ace high is best here. This is the beauty of heads up poker, Lee. There's $21,000 in the pot, both players with stone nothing. And allowing things to progress to the river. I think Daniel has a sense king high is no good here for sure. Old well, man was feeding again. Ooh. Check. Yes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Old man was feeding. I forgot to bet. Well, I would have liked to see a bet yeah, on the river there. Yeah. That's really the first time we've seen Daniel just give up in position on Old the river. Old man's feeding. That's like your new meme now. Yeah, I think so. God, I, I hope there's no tweets when we move over to the online part of the session. We were like... Great session today. Was speeding all night. <laughs> <laughs> Old man speeding. That would not be good. Nine hundred. I want a tipsy elf's onesie with an old man speeding okay. motif on it to wear this Christmas. <laughs> Granu continuing to speed a little bit here with the uh, ten six of clubs mixing in the three bet. Yeah, his uh, accelerator pedal has been far more depressed through this latter 25% of hands than at any other point in the match as it comes 6-6 six, six king. The timing could not be better for him. Smashing trips. Unfortunately, Doug doesn't have a whole lot of anything other than backdoor straight potential. Yeah, but Doug, I imagine, is not going to let this one go for that size. No, it's the pricing that keeps him engaged. And it's been consistent. Three bet and then bet 1,600 for Daniel. No added equity. Dr Doug drawing dead. Daniel checks the turn. Also standard. Boy, one of these times, Doug has just got to figure when he looks up at this texture that he can fire and take this thing. I think it's going to be this time Elise carving out chips. 7,600. 7,600. normal sizing in relation to the pot. And Negranu just trying to figure out how he can extract the maximum from Doug from this point forward. No concerns about any flushes. the call. Doug is totally unimproved on the river. A very clean river at that. Negranu checks again. 
Like, just so tough to walk away from the investment if you're Doug. With a river like that. All in. All in. Oh. How much is it? Ooh. You don't want to hear how much is it. Should be quite a finish we could have here. I mean, this never hits so the So you could have six, seven, five, six. No, I can't imagine a fold. 43, nine, seven, five. 43 plus. Doug Polk putting 43, Daniel Kid Poker Negroni into the ultimate test. Just but Negroni has trips. There's no chance. I, no, actually, there's almost no chance I fold, but I'm just making sure when I'm doing the right thing. So what the hell did he bet on? 76, 15,000, 15,000, 18,000, 26,000. And the bet is 43,975. 43,975. Oh. <sighs> Nothing. Young this. man speeding. Wow. Huge pot for Kid Poker. You think, right. you think Mattis is <laughs> celebrating right now? <laughs> it's funny because you're the one that was saying that. Yeah. Most definitely. All right, I'm back in for 50. Okay. Let me just get like, like I don't need very many because we don't have that many hands. Yeah. Just like something yeah, yeah. for this flag. Four. You want greens too, right? What a nightmare finish for okay. Doug Polk. <laughs> Barring some uncharacteristic double with 50K in these last six hands. That's how I feel. Shit, that was scary. <laughs> <laughs> that was somebody who has, uh, has action on Polk to win tonight. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> uh, 900. 900. Camp Polk expressing their feelings about that last pot. This Lee, man, I want there to be more than 200 hands now. Right yeah. at like the 175 point, these two guys really started to mix it up. Negranio, three bet with the five three suited. Polk, four bet, jack oh, nine off. How much is 12? That's 30 big blinds. I was like, here right? we go. And then yeah. it was a fold. That was okay. 30 big blinds, right? Yeah. I actually like his decision to three bet. I just got I figured. Uh, yeah. I, just <laughs> I was like, my face off. Like, let's. <laughs> yeah. Just on the heels of that big L. That's where people say, who took. lost the last pot? Whoa, <laughs> just the one. one the one's good. 41, Look at this. They're getting after it late now, aren't they? Can you even get a little action here? Yeah. A little action to end the, end the evening? <laughs> Lock it up, you said. Uh, luckily, it's just two vines. Two and a half vines. Nine hundred. At least I didn't get owned there. At least it was like you had the. No, guess. like it wasn't like I yeah. called you with jacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of those spots where it's like your bluff is good. Oh but yeah, if you call me with jacks, then you're like, oops. Like, that was that was a bad bluff. <laughs> that was a very bad bluff. Yeah. Chuck K a man, King Deuce against Ace Four, a Helmuthian dark check out of Doug there, who picks up the wheel draw up against Kings and Deuces. <coughs> Doug check calls four hundred and checks again. Twenty one hundred. Daniel with a rare turn barrel. Call. Doug. Call 
calls again. Now hits a four. Yeah, that's a standard turn peel by Doug. But with how seldom Daniel's been betting the turn, I almost want to let it go. But you wonder whether or not the turn barrel skews more toward the side of he's light right. versus the side of he's strong. At least in Doug's mind. And Daniel taking far longer on the river here to come up with his number. 5100. You wonder how that pause is going to be perceived by Doug, who has improved from ace high to a pair of fours. And this may come down to whether or not Doug thinks Daniel has a king. And if he doesn't, then Doug's hand should be good. Oh, boy. Whoa. Wow, nice. Look at this, Ali. We're repping the ace five and the five six. Might this be a little frustration out of Polk? Sure. 19 two. Does he ever do this with three four? I don't think so, no. This is a tough spot for Daniel. Sure. The ace five is very real in my mind here in this spot, don't you think? Yeah. Not a hand that's going to three bet necessarily. Yeah, oh, wow. Daniel Negreanu takes another huge one off of Doug Polk. We should be hearing an expletive offset in about 15 seconds should based on early. the last one. <laughs> uh, I'm adding 10 more. Tug sighs, and you can see the grief on the face of Doug Polk. 900? 900. 900. I did. I this entire session has not gone the way that he planned. He paid a lot of money in gas to get the All truck right. here, Ali. <laughs> Last hand. Okay. And a lot of gas money has been packaged and delivered here. $117,000 in the hole. Just about two points. Tank full. All right. All right. How much damage was done? One of them for 160. For I was going to say just about 2.2 .2 buy ins as the last hand is a sure fold. What am I in for? I was in for 60. Yep. I mean, I think I went for one, 160. Well, the markets didn't see it playing out this way, but this is such a small sample. 200 hands in the live arena, which many would say favors Daniel. Yeah, it, it is a small sample, but I mean, what an entertaining 200 hands of poker. Boy. This heads up feud has been brewing between these two for a long time, and it's great to see them battling it out on yeah. the belt. Negronia with the edge right now. The gloves certainly appear to come off, not necessarily in conversation, but in play in those last 25 hands, which were oh so exciting. It's Doug. riveting. I want to see more. Like. Yeah, I feel like uh, I'm being shortchanged without some extended play. Can they negotiate another hour or what? I hope so. Well, Brent Hanks rehearsed it oh so well. We might as well cut him loose to see exactly what he's got. Is <laughs> we're going to send it down to him who's standing by with both Daniel and Doug. Wow. Uh, I think, first of all, I need to ask what the viewers at home have been thinking and wondering all along, but uh, what the hell was that? I, I mean, I, I thought you guys hated each other, and now all of a sudden you got reservations, you're heading to Carbone. I mean, what, what, what's going on? Doug, I'll start with you because you're the one that really got throttled today. Uh, thanks. That's great. No, it's always good to start with the getting throttled. Um, you know, what can I say? I had some, uh, some spots to bluff that I thought were good. Uh, they weren't. Um, and uh, just didn't really get things going my way. Are we talking about the friendship, or are we talking about the poker? Whatever you want to talk about, Doug. Uh, yeah. All right, I'll talk about the poker. Um, yeah, I just didn't get good spots, tried to run some bluffs at some inopportune moments, and uh, 
lost some amount of money that I was trying to count before you told me to get up here and get made fun of. All right, fair enough. Daniel, i got to come over to you. Uh, looks like you'll be the one back in the truck up tonight. Uh, Six-figure win, I believe, for yourself. Uh, do you think you had a little bit of an advantage playing in a, in a live atmosphere, something that you've become so used to over the course of your career? Well, there's no question. I mean, I've got like 20 years of playing under the lights in, you know, in this scenario. Um, but unfortunately for me, that's just a very small portion of the match, you know, and I know that we've got a long road ahead and, you know, we're going to be walking into his arena, which is online, a couple tables. Um, obviously super pleased with the start, you know, felt like I played well, executed kind of my strategy and, it, you know, it worked out as good as I could. I mean, it was, it was, it was really important for me to get off to a good start. And I really want to make this match competitive. And I want those that are watching to see like, uh, you know, just a battle to the end. 24,800 hands remain. Are you going to need to adjust your strategy as we head over to the online streets? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, like everything, like here's the key thing, right? We have 200 hands that he's going to, I'm sure watch and I'm going to watch and we're going to see like, what is he doing? What am I doing? And try to figure out ways to improve upon that going forward. So yeah, I mean, I, I expect throughout the match to be all sorts of, you know, changes and shifts. And I just hope to, you know, come out uh, ahead on the end. Doug, I'm going to come back to you, obviously. I, I want to talk a little bit about your perspective facing Daniel today. Were you impressed with his play? Uh, I thought he, he played a couple of nice lines that, that panned out some good spots. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought I think he, he played better than what I was anticipating. But, um, you know, again, it, it, is, it is really early to, to tell. Um, when you just get smashed for a bunch of buy-ins right before, you know, you get an interview, it's hard to be like, yeah, he sucks. Yeah, terrible. Really, really did horrible. No, but I, I thought he played. I thought he played fine. He he played played well. Great stuff, gentlemen. The rest of the competition will head online. Looking forward to watching you guys there. We'll kick it back to you, Ollie. Thanks, Brent. So, Kane, that's it for us tonight. Final thoughts? I mean, it was just so entertaining. You know, watching these two players go after one another on the felt but not so much in words, which is a little bit refreshing. Yeah, and we'll see what the chat box has to offer as it shifts to two tabling online between Daniel and Doug for 25,000 hands. We hope you enjoyed the high stakes feud on behalf of our entire team here in Las Vegas and my partner in the booth, Kane Callis. This is Ali Najad saying good night from the Poker Go studio.